call this June 27, 2023 regular meeting of the Burlington Board of Health to order. Please join me in a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'm Dr. Ed Weiner, Chairman, and with me tonight are board members, Vice Chair David McSweeney. We have members Andrea Sheehan and Mary Beth Welch. Uh, tonight, uh, Gail DeMori unfortunately is ill this evening and won't be with us. We also have Susan Luminello, who is our Director of Public Health, Michael Green, who is our Associate Director of Public Health, Environmental Engineer Christine Mathis, uh, our Health Agent is Marlene Johnson, and our Associate Health Inspector is Samantha Hardy. Please note we're live on and will be taped by BCAT and available for appropriate comments and questions through this video technology. And thank you for BCAT for what you do for this community, keeping us all aware and so well informed. First, we have approval of minutes for May 9th, 2023. And with that, I just want to also acknowledge our recording secretary, uh, Eric Bergeron. Thank you, Eric, for coming. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to approve with just a small um, change on page two. Okay. Instead of um, Miss Walsh, it just needs to be changed to Miss Welch. Oh, sorry. No, small change. Nothing. So I have a motion with one correction. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Second by Andrew Sheehan. Uh, any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. That's four zero <coughs> zero. Uh, chairman's report. I guess that's me. I love doing these reports. The Board of Health, especially its professional staff, but also our Burlington Volunteer Reserve Corps, Triton Grant staff and our elected members and me as chairman have been extremely busy. It may be vacation time, but for many in this community and many in this board and everybody associated with this, this board is very, very busy. My report is gonna be something a little light, but important. In part, yeah, in part a few reminders for the summer. I know there are many, many more, but, but I'm gonna start. Well, when you go places like the beach or hiking, please remember to bring your sandwich. That is S for sunscreen and A-N-D. D, don't forget life preservers, life jackets, and even a hat. W, wash your hands a lot. I, insect repellent. C, uh, seat belts, car seat belts. And H, lots of water, hydration. And most of all, be safe and have fun. And if you think of anything else for this acronym, please email me or give me a call. Uh, we're going to have a very long meeting this night. We're going to move a few things around. Uh, we may even, if it gets very long, take a few minute break. So please bear with me. There are a lot of technical things I need to do, especially around the hearings and uh, I've talked to a lot of people about it, and I think I got it right, but it's a lot of moving parts for this meeting. So, so thank you. Uh, next is subcommittee reports. I do not think we have any subcommittee reports. Anybody? No? Okay. And now citizens' time. Is there anybody here who is not part of an agenda who would like to speak to this board? Is there anybody online who would like to speak to this board that is not on the agenda? No. Then we can move on. Uh, first, we're going to do permits, uh, the keeping of, of animals. And uh, the first is 38 Wheatland Street, keeping of animals, and that is hens. And uh, uh, Susan, are you going to present this? Uh, I'll present this. Marlene, our health agent, Marlene Johnson. So uh, Ms. Cadillac is online. Uh, there she is. She's waving to everybody. She was unable to attend at the last minute. Um, so fortunately, she can attend virtually. So um, she is applying for six hens. 
An inspection was conducted by Samantha Hardy, the Associate Health Inspector, on May 16th. The following were found to be in compliance with the Burlington Board of Health, minimum standards for keeping of animal regulations, the chicken coop design, the proper square footage per hen, proper ventilation, setbacks were met, manure management plan does not cause a nuisance, turf management plan, reseeding grass if needed, feed storage plan <coughs> does not attract pests, and the board can take the following action. Vote yes to approve the keeping of animals permit for six hens for Nicole Sprinkle Cadillac and John Cadillac at 38 Wheatland Street with the following <coughs> conditions. Notify the Board of Health in advance before increasing the number of hens. Do not purchase or acquire roosters or cockerels. Renew the keeping of animals permit 30 days before the expiration date. Allow the associate health inspector to schedule <coughs> and conduct an annual compliance inspection. This permit is approved for applicants noted above and is non-transferable and violations of this permit may be subject to penalties as noted under section nine of the Burlington Board of Health minimum standards for keeping of animals. Or the board may vote no not to <coughs> the keeping of animals permit. So I don't want to go afoul. Does anybody have any questions? None. None. No questions because uh, I don't want to have to pull it. Uh, so we will vote. And uh, do I have a motion? Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to approve the permit for keeping of animals, 38 Wheatland Street. And I'll second. We have a motion and we have a second. Any other, any other discussion? I want to no. make sure. Do we have any questions for uh, Mrs. Ms. Cadillac? Any questions for her? No? She's very professional. I don't expect them to lay any eggs. So with that, I'll put that <laughs> to a vote. All in favor? Aye. 4-0-0, zero, zero. Uh, thank you for being on. And uh, you're all set? OK. Which brings us to uh, our next, which is a seven peach orchard road, the keeping of animals, two hens. <coughs> you have a seat right here. Okay. This is a new one for us. They are renting two chickens, right? Yes, that's correct. We wanted to ease into this uh, right. <laughs> journey. Can't make this up, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, uh, um, so Ms. Johnson, sure. So to inform the board, um, Mr. and Mrs. DeSico are here before you um, to request a permit for two hens. An inspection was conducted by Samantha Hardy on May 17th, and the following were found to be in compliance with the Burlington Board of Health minimum standards for keeping of animals regulation, manure management plan, turf management plan, and feed storage plan. Um, they don't have the coop yet, but they did provide um, dimensions to Samantha, and Samantha said that it does meet the minimum standards. And the action by the board, I won't read those, or those, those are the same conditions I just read a moment ago. So that would be a yes vote with the following conditions, or the board may vote no. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. DeCicio, is that how, did I say it over? DeChico. DeChico. Ditchico, I'm sorry. You've seen the six conditions? Yes, correct. That's actually seven conditions. Okay. okay. <clears throat> I won't go through all of my uh, puns anymore with you. But uh, does Thank anyone you. have any questions for them? No. Where did you find a company that will rent you two chickens? I think it's fabulous. Never heard of it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, so we've always considered raising chickens, and we inquired it with some of our friends, and they happened to know someone who had rented them and told us about this company called rent to coop No, rent the chicken Oh, are you sure? I don't, I've been saying rent to coop <laughs> my, wife, my, my wife's always right. Rent the chicken. Yeah, rent the chicken. Oh, rent yeah. the, rent the chicken. Yes. Rent the yes. chicken. Rent the chicken. Yeah. And they give you everything? They give you the they coop? Get, they, they give oh. us everything. They'll, they'll bring the coop, the chickens, and the feed, and... And you can return it when you don't want they, it? No, they drop it off and they pick, and they pick it up so it's seasonal. Yeah. Oh, it's seasonal. Seasonal. Yes. So, wow. yeah. so, so they'll pick it up in the fall. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. It's great. Uh, I have any problems? Does someone would like to make a I'll motion? I'll make a motion yeah. to approve. 
I'll second a motion. I have a motion. I have a second. I have the discussion. Just thank you for coming. All in favor? Aye. 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 Zero, zero. Awesome. Great. Thank, Thank you. you so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for coming in. I am a little disappointed that we didn't get any puns, but that's... <laughs> <laughs> We're not. I would... We have one more uh, animal license. It's under discussion. Uh, nine Manhattan Drive kennel license recommendation. Could I have a motion since all of the other items on this are going to be lengthy? Uh, to have a motion to uh, to move that up to where we are right now in the agenda. I'll give you a motion. I'll I second. have a motion. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Four zero zero. Nine Manhattan Drive kennel license recommendation. Uh, who's going to? I'll do it. Okay. Thank you. All righty. So um, Deborah Cunningham is applying for a kennel license um, for her property at 9 Manhattan Drive. So she has three dogs. Um, and then um, Todd Smith also lives there. He has one large dog. So together they have four dogs. Um, so I did the inspection. Um, everything was in compliance. And um, there's you can either vote to provide a favorable recommendation to the clerk's office, or you can provide a non-favorable recommendation, so. And the proponent is not here this evening. Is the proponent here? No, no Sometimes, so. Uh, first, I'll ask the board, would they like to uh, proceed, or do you want to wait until the proponent comes before us? Uh, we have done both in the, in the past, whatever you'd like. Any uh, comment? I mean, I'd make a motion to proceed. Um, we've seen, this is, seems typical business. We've seen it before, and you've, Unless you have any reservations, no. looking at your decisions that we have an option to do. So I'd make a motion to proceed in favor. Okay. To the town clerk. So I have a motion to approve to to, uh, to to vote in favor of recommending a positive recommendation to the town clerk. Yeah, I can second that, Mr. Chair. I have a second, and I have a second. Uh, you all set with that? Mayor Beth, are you making a motion to approve it? Or? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, okay yeah. To proceed and approve it. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Okay. okay. Were you agreeing? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 for sure. I just. just All right, thank you. I'm sorry if I didn't state it. No, that's okay. Uh, so I, I have a question. Yeah. What does it actually mean that you're. What does a kennel license provide? Anybody that has more than three dogs yeah, needs a kennel license. Yeah. Okay. And, it, you know, typically the proponents here. Um, and that was the reason why he said, do we want to proceed with yeah. voting on it, or do you want to wait and have the proponent come? Yeah, I, I figured it was because of the fourth, but I wasn't 100% sure. I hadn't seen it before, so yeah. I just wanted to ask. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's not a board of health permit? Correct. It's a recommendation. Right. Yeah. It's just a recommendation. Uh, so I have a motion. I have a second. Any other discussion? If none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Four zero zero. So we can move on with that. Uh, next, we come up to variants. <clears throat> Jack's cold fry, cold fry, fired pizza, mm -hmm. to Wall Street, and uh, FC 60501-115 animals at food establishments. Susan, are you going to present Marley. this? Oh, Marley, yeah, I Marley, will. Miss Johnson. Please sign in on that yeah. piece of paper. Great. Please print so we can. And your so name, please. Simeon Parsons. Simeon? Yes. Last name? Parsons. So this is a new variant before the board. And just to give you a quick background, so um, the food code states that there is not to be any live animals on the premises, <coughs> with some exceptions, service animals, and there's some other exceptions. Um, so you probably have heard uh, Boston has become a dog-friendly outdoor dining um, area and so I had a few people contact our office and there was a little bit of confusion the way it was presented on the news. Um, somebody thought that there was a change in the regulations and I explained no, you would have to come before the board for a variance and that's how Boston is doing it as well. You have to apply for a variance and they have to give you a variance. So I took a look at what Boston had for conditions and they made sense. So um, I included that. Um, in discussion tonight, and then um, the uh, the chairman took a look at it and um, recommended four others. So 16 through 20 were added. So the board, I'm sure you looked at this in advance. Um, you can, 
if you want to remove some of those conditions or if you want to add some conditions, it's up to you. Um, I will go through with this particular one. So this is Jack's Coal Fire Pizza at 2 Wall Street. Um, outdoor patio is located to the left uh, of the screened in dining area. And um, Mr. Parsons would like to receive Board of Health approval for a variance, which will allow an outdoor dog friendly dining area using the existing outdoor dining area on site. And I met with uh, Mr. Parsons on June 5th at the food establishment to take a look at the area to make sure that it was large enough to accommodate uh, pet dogs. And it, it was. And um, the action by the Board of Health, so the board can vote yes to approve the variance with the following conditions. Um, and as I mentioned, the Board of Health may add additional conditions. So the first one is to provide a separate entrance to outdoor dog-friendly dining. Pets cannot be brought through the inside of a food establishment to get to the outside dining area. The entrance of the outside dining area must be clearly labeled with dog-friendly dining area or similar language. And um, just so you know, um, Mr. Parsons and um, also um, Mr. Lebowitz, when he comes up representing Common Craft, they've all met these conditions, just so you know. And there's some pictures showing the signage. And uh, my understanding is Mr. Parsons, um, his company will do more professional signs once it's approved by the board. That's why it's just on paper there in the picture. Po um, post a sign at the entrance of the outside dog-friendly dining area outline the dog owner's responsibilities. So the dog owner is responsible to bring a disposable water bowl, which is recommended. Um, make sure their dog is controlled on a leash or dog care at all times. Dogs are not permitted to eat off plates. Dogs must have all required licenses and rabies vaccinations. Dogs are not allowed on the chairs, benches, or tables. Uh, number four, dog-friendly dining area must be outside. Five, service animals are not part of this variance and service animals are allowed on the premises of a food establishment inside and outside the food establishment. Uh, no tableware stored in outdoor dog-friendly dining area. Seven, no preset tableware on outdoor tables in dog-friendly dining area. Eight, no food prep in outdoor dog-friendly dining area. Food, beverages, or ice, that's all considered food. Dogs, number nine, dogs may be served water only by the food establishment in, a, in the dog owner's bowl or a single use disposable container provided by the food establishment if they choose. Per, 10, provide hand sanitizer on outdoor tables in dog friendly dining area. 11, provide a designate, uh, designated outdoor trash receptacle for dog waste accessible to but away from diners. 12, employees should not touch dogs while working. If they do, immediate hand washing by employees is required. 13, proper cleaning of tables, chairs, benches, and area around table after use. 14, the food establishment is responsible for the management of the outdoor dog friendly area, including but not limited to cleanliness, prohibiting cross contamination, and requesting customers to leave if they are unable to control their dog. 15, this variance is non-transferable to new ownership of the food establishment. 16, if the Board of Health finds repeated non-compliance with these conditions, the variance may be revoked by the Board of Health at a regularly scheduled board meeting. 17, a written procedure describing how dog defecation, urination, sweat, and vomit is cleaned up must be approved by the Board of Health. Both have submitted those to me and I approved both of them. That's great. At number 18, a single individual manager at, at all times must be assigned posted and is responsible for handling all dog related issues. That individual is responsible for reporting all incidents to the Board of Health and Burlington Police Department if applicable. And 19, any adverse safety public health issue related to the presence of dogs must be reported to the Board of Health Police Department within 24 hours. 20, the food establishment is fully and legally responsible 
for any safety and or public health issues that may arise from the presence of dogs in the restaurant. That's uh, dogs in the outside dining area. This includes, but not limited to, attacks, intimidation, health-related issues, and allergic reactions. It will hold the Board of Health harmless in all cases, uh, or the Board of Health may vote no and not approve the variance. Uh, I think the first question is, you've seen all these before? Yes. You we'll agree to all these? Yes. Okay. Mr. Chair, I have some questions. Right, so let's let's yeah. have a, a discussion over this. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I get both sides of this argument. I get the pros and cons about it. Um, so I just would love to understand your reasoning for wanting the, the permit. And I do have some um, maybe other conditions I'd like to add as well. So the deck itself is kind of underutilized. Um, so we'd like to try to get some business out there. And, and what's the seating capacity that's out there? The outside, the total is 85. There is an interior interior area that would not be part of it. Um, so it's probably about 40. Gotcha. Thank you. Um, you know, I think we're progressive board and I, I think we can try it. Like I, I get both sides of the argument. There are people that are allergic to dogs or animals. Um, but also too, I you know I don't think I, I see this everywhere I go nowadays. Every everywhere in all communities. Sometimes they probably don't have approval to have the dogs out there. But I, I don't I don't necessarily have a problem. I do if we do vote on this in favor. I do like to see maybe we limit the number of dogs that are in the patio so that it doesn't become a dog park out in the back deck. Um, and I don't know what that number is, you know, but we can talk about it. I also want to put in there uh, so two things. Um, it talks about dog in here, but uh, maybe we can clarify, make a statement that this is only for approval for dogs and not other live animals as well. That would be great. Um, and also, we, the dog can't be left unattended. Um, uh, if somebody has to go to the bathroom, I didn't see that. It's not clear, clear in here that the dog can't be left unattended. But I don't, at least I didn't see it. But I, how would you manage that if you had a customer that was there by themselves with their dog? Yeah, they can't go to the restaurant. How is that? They can't, right? They can't go to the restaurant or. Right. The dog has to be on a leash or carrier at all times. Yeah, but they could st be still be unattended if they're not on a leash, right? Um, and I just want to make sure, too, it's not clear that the dog can't be on the person's lap, that they have to be um, on the ground or, I guess, in a, in a carrier or a stroller or something. But other than that, I, you know, again, I, I think we should try it. We can revoke it at any time. I, I see this all over the place, and I don't necessarily have an issue with it. <coughs> I don't have an issue. I just, I was, how is it managed in Marlene? Maybe you may know this from, other, you know, I know this is new to Burlington, but how is it managed if you have I would lots? ask. I would ask him how he plans to manage yeah, it. Thank you. Idea. Okay. And, and how is it managed if you have a client that is, you know, one, one customer, one dog, and they do, is it, it just, it's in a crate or it's, you can't really leave if it to If they wanted to use the restroom yeah. or something like that, uh, I would have the manager that's posted be responsible for it's that responsible. dog while they use the restroom. Mm -hmm. Okay. Marlene, is there additional work that you or Sam have well, to do for this? No? No. Okay. I think we, you know, I think it's a great idea. However, I'm not familiar with the space, and if it's 40 tables, is this a 40 chairs, would it be 40 dogs? That's right. when I start saying, we, it, you kind of do need somewhat of a limit, because that could, it could, you know, things could happen if it's super packed. Right. So. Uh, Two dogs per table, probably about 10 tables out there. Twenty. Maybe, maybe do a percentage of the yeah, number but yeah, of seats. Yeah, so if it seats, seats eighty-five, maybe ten percent or something. And think about that. So uh, would that work? So how many seats did you say you have out there? Forty. So that'd be four dogs four. if we did ten percent. There's forty seats, or the capacity. Well, you said the capacity, the capacity was eighty. Is. So how many, how many tables, tables do you have? This is just for the outdoor. Ten tables. Ten tables. Ten tables. Ten tables. What's the square footage, or what do you know what the size of the deck is? I don't know off the top of my I, head. I did sorry. include some photos is if it? that helps. I know yeah. it doesn't have any uh, square footage. But I remember it being like a really large deck. It is, yeah. it is yeah. pretty yeah. large. Do you expect, if there's another question, yeah. do you expect this to be primarily a dog 
area. I do. So you don't expect to maybe have a, a lot of other, other, a lot of other people <coughs> do not have dogs. So their option would be the three season porch. That's just the uh, side. That's right. Yeah. So there would be that <coughs> deck available to them. Maybe maybe we cap it at five dogs, Mr. Chair, for now. Uh, if, yeah. that's, if that's what. I would also ask uh, our health agent. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what I you said. I said maybe David. five dogs at one time. So I think we should base it on seats, just so that you're fair with everybody. Okay, because so if there's 40 seats, so four dogs? You know, so do you want to say 10%? I, I don't know. Susan, I don't you know want to weigh right in? Answers. I have one other question. Yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering, so you have 10, you said you have 10 tables. So is that one dog per table? I mean, or two, two, so if you have one dog per table, that's 10 dogs. So if you do half of the half of the amount of tables, that seems reasonable. So then you can I don't know how you're five planning dogs. on seating That's people. That's right, five, Are you so. planning on seating people with dogs in one part of the deck and then non dog not if you don't have a dog, you're in the other part. I mean, some people may not want to be seated next to the dogs. Right. So their option would be the, the three season, the screened in portion of the deck. Separate deck. So so you'll never seat anybody without a dog. Unless they want to be. Oh, okay. They would, they would be more than welcome to, right. They would be more than welcome to have that option. And this, out, and this outdoor seating is seasonal, right? Because it's not the three season porch. So right. is it through the, is it stated in here that I, I'm sorry, Melina, if it said it and I missed it, what we don't have, is it month to month, like starting at this month, ending this month? It would be it would be seasonal, so whenever they whenever stop the outdoor people. seating, then and that would be the end of it, just okay. for the season. But then they can restart it next season. Next season, so. okay. Right. So you expect it's probably going to be pretty popular. The people are going to want to bring their dogs out here. Then I hope so. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. So I think it will. I mean, maybe we start with five, and then if it's successful and you want to come back and add to it, maybe you come back and talk about it. I don't know. Should we do a percentage, though, tables well, versus, yeah, maybe. versus chairs? So that's the question. Do you want to Well, do the thing is, there might be restaurants that come to us that have three tables on the sidewalk, right? I don't even know, right? About four right. tables on the sidewalk. What are we going to do? They can have <coughs> four dogs out there? I don't, you know what right. I'm saying? So I think it should be based on something, a percentage. Yeah. yeah. So and do we have a staff from others? Per seat rather than per table, because if somebody comes with, you know. One table with four dogs. They each have a dog or something, because they were walking dogs. I don't know. I know it's. I have more, per, more, more than one per table. Yeah, but then the, the other side of the deck, <coughs> I mean, that's only one table, right? So he's nine other tables that you can't utilize because he already has four dogs at yeah, the table. Yeah, I know it's new to Burlington, Maybe but it. Both and limit. I mean, we don't want to put too much of a constraint because then, like, that's the whole piece is to pull business. Yeah. I mean, a lot of folks don't go out to dinner if they can't get a sitter for their dog, right? So what is, what is some, I, um, no, I don't want to talk about that, Christine, because I know people that do. Um, <laughs> yep. Um, or they don't want to leave them home for a period of time. But what, can we just have an example of what the, I mean, there's lots of restaurants that are doing this outside of Boston, too, and there's one in Everett. Like, so what, what are they doing that we might? To decide. Right. <laughs> but I don't have. I need an example. No, I, do think I need an example. This, this is, is new. For me too. Well, I have. Right. You know, this I don't new. think that. I mean, the what we're basing on is Boston, and Boston didn't have any conditions limiting dogs. So if you want to limit dogs, you certainly can, but you have to. Like, it would probably be a good idea to do have some kind of criteria that you're going to use to do so. Whether that is, you know, allowing. You know, if you do it by, based on seats and there's 40 seats, you do 10%, that's four dogs. Or maybe you might want to say, you know, for, uh, allow each table, to, four tables can have dogs or something, based on tables. So you can have two dogs at one table or something. So that way it might go over four dogs, but limiting it to the number of tables. Or allow it at every table and then you have 10 dogs, you know. I don't know if we want so, every yeah, I mean, so your concerns around the number of dogs is with what? The, what is the concern? Well, that's it becomes a dog park, right? And this is. And things get out of hand. What if it's, you know, they can't be controlled this, because they're all this, agitated by each other? I yeah, mean, well, this restaurant has the benefit of the screened in porch, so they, anybody that wants to sit outside can sit on the screened porch. That's not the case at other establishments. They use the, out, it's combined yeah. animals and people without animals. Um, 
and if people want to sit outside, and they're like, we I think we need to limit. Yeah. Well, what would happen would be that you know you might have pa they might have patrons coming and being like, well, I don't want to sit outside with the dogs, and therefore, and they'll be like, well, this that's all that's available if the porch is full. They might lose patrons over it. Well, I mean that's the, right. the that's what I'm saying. That's when I started off saying there's pros and cons to it, right? I'm right. sure that's the spin. So they some people are allergic to dogs, right? So. They they want to put some kind of limit themselves. Is yeah. what I'm saying. You know. I'm just curious. Have you, you ever know. gotten a call from a dog being in a restaurant? Have you? I mean, have I didn't think so. I mean, I see it all the time. I see it all the time quite, too. To be quite honest with you. So. Yeah, me too. Um, you know. Well. Not I know. I'm just saying. I, I see agree. it all the time. Well, I see we don't it, know if it's a certain. I dog. see it in in uh, in in the mall all the time. I see dogs in the mall, right? So um, well, I see it. That's the mall. That's not the food establishment. Right. Well, I mean, you go there to the food, food court. There, there. there, I see them all Still, the time. Yeah. I, I think I spoke to uh, you spoke about this at length. Dogs can be in an area as long as they're not in a food prep area. Is that correct? Right. So they can be in the mall. There's no problem. But they're not in, if as long as they're not in a food prep area. Well, there's well, they're food walking on the food yeah, floor. Yeah, yeah. I just I, and I, you know, there's all the time. I, I get where you're coming from. I'm not trying to debate that. I'm just saying, like, I just think we should maybe ease into this mm -hmm. and figure out what's working for us and what's not, and then we could always change it. Yeah. yeah, and so it sounds like your concern is that there'd be too many dogs, and then too many dogs might cause issues. Could, could cause issues, and again, this establishment's different in that they can segregate. If people want to sit outside, they have the three season porch. Uh, but not all, all establishments have that. They're gonna, I think the next one that's coming up, they have mixed use, right? They don't have another way to sit outside other than the outside patio. Yeah. They actually, they, they actually, um, they open their doors. So it's indoor or they outdoor? Have, they have like a, um, a um, a mechanism that insects can't come into the kitchen, so they actually open it up. So you're even though you're inside, you're still right. sort of outside. So what, what happens if there's 40 seats and there's 40 people with dogs? You're okay with that? So, <laughs> and I'm, that's a rhetorical okay question. That. That's a rhetorical that, question. That, right? Yeah, but that's what I'm thinking yeah. is I don't know if you have any. Have you thought about that? Like Absolutely. the possibility of too many dogs and what you're going to do? Are you going to like? self-imposed limits on that because that could, could cause chaos for you right well I think there's there's definitely gonna be things that we have to think about liabilities all those you know we're gonna have posted signs we're gonna take people use common sense think about how you know what the consequences could be if I'm not gonna put 40 dogs on that deck you know I'm gonna look at it and say you know I, I I think we're full right now. Are you comfortable Sorry. with the limit? And do you have any thoughts around the limit? Not that, um, not that you're going to decide this far as. But yeah, exactly. I yeah. think you know, ten might be a better number. But you know, we're more than happy to start with four or five, and we can always come back, like you said. I think we, as a board, we should limit it and see how it goes for a year, right. and then we can talk about it next year. But. I don't know what the number is. I'm so when you're to. limiting it, though, you're limiting it somehow on the size of the deck. Yeah, it's every every well, every everybody can have a different yeah. limit. Yeah. So sure. so when they for the next, <coughs> it'll be, we'll be you'll be looking at the size of the sure. deck or the number of seats. Sure. Okay. So maybe every other table would that work? Six dogs. Well, it's fifty-five. Five dogs. Well, five one tables. Yeah, but what happens if one table has four dogs? We would limit it to two. Two dogs. To, uh, yeah. Two other tips. Okay. Just to make sure. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I, good. I'm, I'm open. Okay. You know, I, I talked to a lot of people about this, and originally I was absolutely 100% against this. And I talked to so many people, and they said, well, there's never a problem. Uh, I said, well, there could be. So I w I've changed my mind. I think that uh, after a long discussion with our director and our, our uh, health agent, both of them have years of, of experience, I, they've changed my mind around this. Uh, but I do understand that. I want to make sure that if this is a dog fight, it's your liability, and it's your insurance company. We're not, we're not going to be held liable in so, in so far as, well, the Board of Health approved it, it's their problem. No, it's not going to be my problem. It says right in there, you're, you're fully liable. We're harmless. And I don't want to be sued in, in that way. So I don't know. There are 10 tables. How many tables? And I think we should think of how, not the number of dogs. How many tables do we want a dog at? Maybe you want to limit it to a limit of 
so many dogs per table not to exceed a total of so many dogs at one time on the patio. <coughs> if, you, if you're concerned about the number of dogs per table. So I'm assuming if they're all on one table, the, all the dogs already get along. <laughs> but, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I guess that's, that's fine. So, so what, I, don't, I don't know the oh, answer. Would you go ahead and repeat that, please? Well, if you wanted to, so he said he wouldn't allow more than two dogs per table. So if somebody came in and they had four dogs and they were all there. They dogs, have to sit at separate tables. You would say, I don't, we don't want all these dogs at this one table. Unfortunately, we're not able to accommodate that many yeah. dogs. Or you got to get two tables yeah. next to each other. Can, they can be yeah. put on the waiting list, right? There you two. Go, be put on a waiting list. Yeah, they got a waiting list when the two dogs leave, two more come in. Sure. Yep. So, so how, do you, how does well, the board want me to, so, to so, phrase so, this? So how about five tables, a maximum of ten dogs? Is that too many? I I don't, I don't know. I that's a lot of dogs. A lot of dogs. A, uh, yeah. I don't think you're gonna see it. I really don't. But I mean, I hope you do. <laughs> and, uh, you know. Yeah. When you've seen it. Yes. And you've been in other towns and cities. Yes. Was it out of control? No. With no. the number of dogs? No. No, but I've never seen more than couple. two or three, four dogs. I've right? seen more than all. I think that's what you're probably going to yeah. find here, too. Yeah, I agree. So, we have right here. Listen, if my wife had her way, my dog would go everywhere with us. <laughs> so, I mean, she'll probably be coming to Jack's now more often. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got to tell you, it's, it's, we're never going to have a, we've never had problems with dogs. We're going to have problems with people. Well, that's what that's so that we gotta be worried about that too, right? That's why we're here. We're not <coughs> because you know they, they get more. So the question is, how many dogs, and how or either that or how many tables? I do have a question. If we set this limit, and you know, are we expecting you to have phone calls? And I was at, you know, it was six dogs. It's only supposed to be five. Oh, I'm sure. Well, you're, gonna, you're gonna be managing that. Yes, possibly, or we could get phone calls with, you know, there was, I was there and there was a ton of dogs. You know. Yeah, you're gonna, you're If you gonna say it's five dogs. and they said there was four dogs on the patio and we'll have to just tell people, well, they, they were granted a variance. And That's so yeah. what's yeah. the difference if we have something on the common with all the food trucks? I've seen more dogs there. I mean, there's all food dog trucks around. Yeah, and that's not a food establishment. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and that's why. Um, okay. I, yeah, I don't know what the right answer is. Do you want to? Yeah. I, I am concerned about putting a limit in affecting business. Okay, so you, so I guess the, what the board needs to discuss is <clears throat> now is deciding do you want a limit? And then if, if you want a limit, then we can figure out what that limit would, would be. I, I would like to limit the amount of tables. I think that's the easiest to do. I would like a limit as well. Amount of tables. So there's gonna be 10 tables out there. I think that, uh, that at least to start, and you can come back to us, that the five dogs. tables. Oh, five tables. Five dogs. Well, I was just gonna say tables. Just Again, I would, I, I, think I would say tables. percentage. Yeah, I would say Because yeah. like, like uh, <coughs> Ms. McSweeney said, if somebody comes before the board and that's all they have is four tables, because they have a small outdoor seating area, so. I would maybe do a percentage. Percentage of the seats. Seats or table. Yeah. 50% so of the tables, is that too much? That would be five dogs, because there's 10 tables. Yeah, with I mean, I, I think. Per table. I think it's fine with that, but I, like I said, I'm just thinking of other instances, right? There's the sidewalk that has four tables. That means there's gonna be two dogs there, right? Yeah, are you okay with that? Theoretically, too, I guess I am. Well, unless, yeah, that's true, because I guess the size of the table would matter, so maybe you should do seating. Because <laughs> if it's just a small table. And, and I don't want to overcomplicate this right? either, you know, but. So, yeah, maybe you should do Mr. Parsons, so it's seats, tough to be the first one you do in town. <laughs> I do 20%. Four. All right, so if you do 20%. Eight dogs. Four, eight dogs. If you have an out, small outdoor area that's only got four Six seats, seats. you do 20%, <clears throat> you do 20% of that. Right which is like a half of a dog. <laughs> <laughs> so they gotta bring only a chihuahua, I can't do that. Allow one dog, I don't know, yeah. So no dogs. So I'm fine with that, 20% 20, 20 of the seats? That, I'm fine with that. 20%? I think, I mean, who knows? We might run into issues. I think, and then too, if you find, if he finds that there is like, wants to come back to the board to petition yeah. for more right, seats, right. he 
you can and we can always change the variance. Yes, I agree. Yeah. And uh, okay. I, so, I think we should try that. So 20% of the seats, which okay. would be out of 40, would be 10 of the seats where they could have dogs. And what Mar in Marlene's conditions here, too, it states it doesn't affect a service dog. So right, no. no. So they don't count. You could have four service dogs out right. there plus. Yes. Four. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But 20% of the seats could be, <clears throat> could be three tables, actually. Yeah, could 20% yeah. of the seats. We're not going to run into this scenario, but yes, you're right. So you, you want could, to say though. five tables? You, you could basically have, if you're granting 20% of, you're looking at eight dogs. In a ten-table area, that seems a little. It's a really big area. It, is it, yeah, it, it, it is a good, it is a good side area. area. Okay, I have a good side area. Area. In all yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I'm not worried about this one. I'm worried about the other instances where there's four area. tables on a sidewalk, yeah. right? So, so, can we add? Can this twenty percent? What is your? What is? I'm, I'm comfortable with that for this particular. I'm comfortable with that. Did you get my other chain? My other. I did, I did. Okay. Yes, so some uh, clarification, specification. Yeah. Yes, I got everything. So, so Mr. Chair, I'll try to put this in a motion. I will approve the variance for uh, keeping of animals for Jack Jack's Coal Fired Pizza to Wall Street uh, with the current 20, is it 20 conditions? 20 conditions plus. Plus um, 20. the number of dogs kept at 20% of seating capacity. Um, dogs uh, adding that this is only for dogs or a, a speculation that this is, uh, even though it's live animal um, variants, it's only dogs. Uh, the dog can't be left unattended. And uh, what was the other one? Oh, uh, can't dog can't be on the left. Yeah. So there will be a total of 20, one, two, three, four, 24 conditions. Okay, this is, okay, we have motion, we have second, any discussion? Please understand, you're the first. If this works out real well this year, you can come back to us and say, look, it's, we had no problems, we need to increase. So this is an experiment for not only you, but it's an experiment for us. Uh, are you okay with this? Absolutely. Is all in favor? Aye. Aye. Four zero zero. Uh, so you can speak to our health agent, or our, our health agent, uh, Ms. Johnson, and you can get going as soon as she approves. Perfect. So fine gives you yep, final as, approval. Yep, as soon as you get your signs fine, printed, and then you should be good to go. Yep. Yep. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. <coughs> Common Craft 75 Middlesex Turnpike. <coughs> well, did you hear the message? Did you hear the discussion? I sure did. <laughs> I vote we decline this one. No, I'm like, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> so, do you have any initial thoughts at all on what we just talked well, about? Let, let present. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Health agent present for us, please. Okay. Um, so, this is Common Craft at 75 Middlesex Turnpike. So, this is one of the restaurants that's um, in the mall but uh, has outside entrance to the restaurant and they have an outdoor patio that's located to the right um, of the food establishment. It's all fenced in. And um, Mr. Lebowitz is requesting Board of Health approval for variance to allow an outdoor dog-friendly dining area using the existing outdoor dining area that he has on site. I met with um, Mr. Lebowitz on June 8th and took a look at his outside area and reviewed the conditions, and um, he's here tonight. He heard the additional conditions, so the board could either vote yes to approve it with the, the conditions that you did at the, on the last um, food establishment, or the board can vote no. And Mr. Leibowitz, you heard the 24 conditions? Yes, I did. And uh, can you comply with those 24 conditions? Yes, I can. Do you have anything else to like to note for us? 
Uh, I would like to note that uh, Common Craft is quite unique in the uh, vast outside space that we have. We just acquired an additional um, 3,500 square feet in the green space that was leased to us from Simon Properties uh, to activate that space as such with um, ongoing programming. Um, our seat count is um, is still limited to, um, to 58 seats in a total of 4,500 square feet. So there's uh, quite a large amount of space that we have um, utilized for um, for dining as well as for uh, lawn games and, and live music and um, more lounge area. Um, so we have ample space to um, to satisfy the needs of the board and to mitigate any of the concerns that I think you may have. Thank you. Ms. Liebwitz, you are the owner of this establishment? That's correct. Okay. And uh, will he receive the complete 24 conditions. They both will, <laughs> both will tomorrow both morning, will. yes. And uh, please understand also that next year you can go back to us and you can we can add to this and see, understand that, you know, this is a, we're a new territory here. And uh, we want to make you make sure you're successful and we're going to make sure that we have no problems. So for the first year, we're being limited a little bit, uh, but you're welcome to come back next year and we can talk a little bit more about additional uh, canines. <laughs> so, uh, so just a point of clarification. So the the number of, of dogs that I'm allowed is is the same as the previous. It would be twenty percent of your seating capacity. Your outdoor seating okay. capacity. Okay. So how many oh, sorry, seats? Sorry, outdoor seating capacity. How many outdoor seats do you have? Uh, Fifty eight seats. So it'd be twenty percent of that. <coughs> are those tables new in the greenery area? Um, some of them are new. Some of them are existing. Mr. Chairman, if I could just ask. Sure. A so I'm looking at the pictures um, that were provided. Uh, it doesn't look like there's 58 seats out there. Are they all currently out there now, or is that what you can have out there? Uh, there's, I think there's 54 out there right now. Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't, I'm not oh. quite sure what the pictures um, um, are showing, but it, it's it's quite a vast space that that really isn't captured in just in a few photographs. Um, it looks like there's nine high tops or something. So there's the there's the the patio section and then there's the green space. So you're counting both of those? Uh, I'm sorry, say that again? So the, you have the patio, which is the brick portion. Correct. Where you serve food, and then you also serve food in the green space? Uh, c correct. Oh. Okay. So it, it's it's a it's a very fluid space right now where the where the tables are are spread out based on the programming. Um, our 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 service model is is uh, through QR codes that the customer scans, and those are exclusive to the tables that are on the brick space right now. Um, however, the entire operation, uh, including the green space, is within our uh, ABCC permitted area. It's and that's that's part of where the food service happens, Marlene, right? They, they have food service on yes, the Yes, they do. Okay. So in, the, in the turf area? So is there a manager out there at all times, too? There is a manager, yes. Okay. So I thought I haven't been in the outside space. Um, and I'm just looking at, and I'm sorry, the, the green is all gated now, too, right? Correct. Yeah, that's, that's new. Okay. Thank you. So... Do we have any, anything else we want to add? So um, if he changes the seating capacity, it's automatically going to change the number of dogs that he's Well, he can't, he can't do that because um, his seating is set by the planning board, I believe. Correct. So he can't. But does that include the green, the turf area? So what he has there has been approved, sure. so he can't increase the gotcha. number of seats. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So we have, we have a. Uh, the same 24 conditions. Uh, I haven't heard anything else to add, add anything else. Uh, I'd like a motion to either approve or deny. You, you, uh, you're going to add the conditions. With the four, yeah, the four, add four, add yeah. Yeah. four additions. Yeah. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to approve the variance for keeping of, um, what, what is no the animal? No chickens at the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the animals at FSEs for Common Craft 75 Middlesex Turnpike with the uh, 24 uh, conditions. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion from anybody? Anyone else want to add in? Anything else you'd like to say? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Four zero zero. Thank you.
Thank you for coming. We wish you well. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> now we have another last variance. Hungry Marketplace, 77 South Bedford Street, Unattended Food Establishment, UFA. Hello. And please, son, please put your name. Sure. And your name, please, is? Adele Manti. I'm sorry? My name? Slowly, yes. Adele Manti. It's an Italian name, so. Thank It'd you. Be a little different. It's okay. Mm -hmm. So Ms. Manti is before you tonight um, to ask for a variance from having to have a person in charge. Uh, this, you saw this at the last meeting. This is an unattended food establishment, so it's within an office building. And um, an unattended food establishment is an operation typically located in, in office buildings or restricted break areas where access by the general public is somewhat restricted. These operations frequently offer packaged time temperature control for safety food and non temperature uh, time temperature control for safety foods that are displayed in a refrigerator unit, food racks, baskets, and or countertop display units. <coughs> Unattended food establishments may also be equipped with microwave ovens or offer automatically dispense hot and cold beverages. Uh, the one common characteristic of all these operations is that they lack the presence of an on-site person in charge. So the variance um, would be from um, 105 CMR, 590.003, food code 2-10111, um, which requires a person in charge be present at the food establishment during all hours of operation. Uh, save, same level of protection. So the Massachusetts Department of Public Health Food Protection Program provides a guidance document for unattended food establishments. It's prepared by the Conference for Food Protection. The, this document was provided to the food establishment noted above to establish a written food safety plan for the unattended food establishment. I have reviewed and approved their written plan by following the procedures outlined in their plan, the same level of protection can be achieved. And I did include that for you. Um, per my request, uh, Ms. Manti went through and highlighted in red um, what their written uh, procedure will be for each of those points. And she's working with the property management um, at the building. So the action by the Board of Health, uh, vote a vote yes to approve the unattended food establishment variance for Hungry Marketplace at 77 South Bedford Street with the following conditions. One, Hungry Marketplace operating at 77 South Bedford Street shall follow their approved written plan for minimum requirements for an unattended food establishment, which is attached. Two, this variance is for the location noted above. Any additional proposed unattended food establishments within the town of Burlington will, requ will require a separate written plan and variance. Three, violations of this variance may result in an appearance before the Board of Health and may result in a temporary suspension of the food permit. Continued violations may result in the revocation of the variance by the Board of Health. And four, in the event of an imminent imminent or threat of a health hazard, the Board of Health may suspend the food permit without a prior hearing as outlined in 105 CMR 590.014A, or the Board may vote not to approve the variance. Would you like to add anything? Well, I've been working with Marlene and uh, we're ready to go. Does anybody have any comments? I, I don't, I'm very familiar with this. Yes. I, I just have one, and because I, I've read this three or four times, and I'll ask Marlene, do we need a condition, and the one that I have written was any food safety or public health issue must be reported to the Board of Health within 24 hours? There is nothing here that requires them to report to us if there's an issue. We can add that. I, I mean, it's, it's, I just asked them, I mean, I'm sure you would. Well, we do have a, a, any issues, there is a sign to, oh, you're saying to, to the Board of Health yeah. rather than us. Yeah. Okay. To let us sure. know. Yeah, of course, so we can have that. Know. So I, I, I just, I read this and That's I said, one. you know, I, I just uh, require them within 24 hours to report to us. So I say any food safety or public health issue 
must be reported to the Burlington Board of Health within 24 hours. So we can actually just add that to the condition and that's well, already probably there. Probably you would anyway, but if we ever had, had an issue with that, I think it should yeah. be listened. Did you get that? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we'll, do, we'll add that to four. In the event of an imminent or threat of health, the Board of Health may suspend the food permit. I'll, so what I'll do is I'll say that you need to notify the Board of Health. Yep. Then I'll do a separate um, any number five. Any, in, any food, right, that there's food a safety or public health issue must be reported to the Board of Health within 24 hours. Okay. And that was it. And I, I just don't want them to mistake a, a food health issue with a POS problem. Do you know what I mean? Like a, a lot of right. people are not very familiar with Square, and then they'll be like, oh, let's call the Board of Health, but it's actually something else. It's something so uh, we, do, we should have two signs. One is for the sales It would be point. you. It would be, it would be, it would be you, you that would you contact, not, not your customers. Right, so it, would be, it would be you, whoever, whoever's in charge of the operation, okay. if, you, if you came in or you got a notification that I would the have refrigerator went Absolutely. down, you're going to address it, and then you're going to let the Board of Health so know, somebody hey, contacts we had an me issue. And I have to contact you. That's yeah, we, we lost product in the refrigerator. This is what we did. This so, is how we corrected so you, it. It puts it, the onus on you. You don't have to put a, I wouldn't say a sign for this. This is on your. No, I understand. Just, just sorry, train, I yeah. misunderstood. Thank you. And I think that's pretty, pretty uh, reasonable. Standard, yeah. Yep. And train your staff. <coughs> if you have other staff that is, is going on site so they understand what they need to do. Thank you. Uh, so, do, we have, do I have a motion to approve or a motion? So moved to approve. Second motion by uh, Ms. Welch, second by Ms. Sheehan. All in favor? Aye. 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 All set. Thank you. Those, have a good night. With those five Thank conditions. Yes. Thank you. And I will get a letter from you and then. Yes, tomorrow. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you. All right. Bye. Good luck. <laughs> Moving right along. Boy. The next we have two hearings. Now, as required by law now, uh, I need a, I need to be very careful about this, and I need a motion to open the hearing for four Ledgewood Drive housing. So I need a motion by. So moved. Second. Me, second by. Me. Uh, Mary Beth. Uh, and I have to, and I have to uh, do a roll call vote. Uh, Motion second. All in favor, Mr. McSweeney. Aye. Ms. Sheehan. Aye. Ms. Welch. Aye. And I vote aye. So we're going to open the hearing. And uh, I guess that our director will open, the, will uh, report on this. Yes. Uh, please. Mm -hmm. um, so Samantha Hardy uh, conducted a, a housing inspection. It was called by the, uh, requested by the tenant. Um, at uh, this address and um, went out, did the inspection, issued a correction order um, and for several violations. And um, the, um, the, the owner of the property requested this hearing in writing. Uh, so that's where we are now today. Um, this is the first time that I have experienced this type of request, so I did reach out to Cheryl Sabara, Attorney Cheryl Sabara of the Massachusetts Association of Health Boards, trying to give some direction on, you know, what the board should be doing in this type of hearing. And she uh, responded to me that the board can consider all of the evidence and make its own decision based upon what you hear. Um, and the owner can introduce any evidence that they want, and then the board can give that any uh, that evidence any weight that it wants, and it's up to the board um, to how they want to vote on the um, issues of the violations. So that was the explanation that she gave back to me, just to provide some direction to the board on what legally uh, their responsibility is here. So we're going to hear um, testimony from the um, owner of the property. I, we do have two uh, people online. I don't know if they're here for this issue or not. If they are, if they could just let us know so we know um, to give them a chance to speak. Um, you can just unmute yourself if you are, or you can just let me know in the chat. And I'll let you know if they, they respond to me in the chat. But I did try to reach out to the tenant, the tenant was notified, Sam notified her, 
and um, and uh, I wasn't able to leave a message and I wasn't able to speak to her. So um, I don't know if you want to go through each one of these violations. Sam conducted the inspection. There are pitches in here. So if you have any questions on any of the violations, um, we can answer them. So do you want me to go through each one of the violations and then have them speak or um, how, how would you like to proceed? Well, I think we need to summarize them. There are people in line with this, summarize them. And the really issue ones, the, issue, the really important ones are the 24 hours and 48 hours, which require immediate, uh, something to be done immediately uh, according to this correction order. Right, and that's according to the, um, the housing code. So we, the 24 hours or the 48 hours, is based on um, the housing code and what the requirement is in the housing code. And of course, you can't you know, fix a deck in 24 hours. The expectation is that you're gonna start working on it. You would find a contractor, you would, you would start moving towards getting it fixed as soon as possible. So that's what the 24 hours or 48 hours is. Um, so just to go through the violations that she observed. And so if you look at the, the order letter, the way this is written, we have the regulatory citations, the violation, and then in the housing code, um, there's a wording that's um, called condition deemed to endanger, and, and that's what this column is. And this is called out in the housing code whether or not this is what they call a condition deemed to endanger. And then the last thing is the time frame for compliance. So, um, the, Maybe this, summarize each one. Yeah, quickly. sure. Okay, so the deck in disrepair, so that was loose hand railings. Um, the <coughs> second one was the, um, the handrail for the deck. Um, that has to do with the housing code has specific requirements for what the deck should, um, should, should consist of, and it did, that wasn't met. Um, the baseboards and doors allowing entry of pests. This is ceiling, uh, holes and things like that. So because this is a single family home, the, um, the, the requirement if they have pests, which she did observe uh, rodent droppings, um, is for on the uh, occupant. However, if there is holes and things like that where the pest can come in, then that's on the owner. Um, Basement face boards and doors in disrepair, not watertight. So she did see evidence of water damage in the basement. It appeared that there may have been a, a leaky pipe. Um, and the next one, same thing. The ceiling in the basement uh, was leaking pipes, evidence of chronic dampness. So we, she went down into the basement, saw the evidence of chronic dampness, saw the leaking pipes. But we don't go up and try to figure out where the pipe is leaking. That's that's on the owner to do that. We saw the evidence of it, that's a violation. The owner will now need to go back and kind of inspect it and see where the leak is and what's causing um, the um, chronic dampness. The ceiling, again, the ceiling in the basement was in disrepair, um, so maybe due to the, the leakage or some liquid leakage at some point in time. The uh, wash machine, the occupant reported that the wash machine uh, did not work. So in the housing code, if the, and this is what they're going to bring up, if the owner um, provides equipment like a wash machine when the, to the, when the occupant moves in and it breaks, they need to fix it. However, if it's not provided, then they don't, they don't need to provide one. So when we asked the occupant about well, when Sam asked the occupant about the washing machine, she said that it was there when she moved in. So that's why that was written as a violation. Um, there was a leaking pipe next to the washing machine. Excuse me. Um, next one, same thing with the dryer. So she reported that the dryer was not working and it was provided when she moved in. The mechanical ventilation in the bathroom was not working. Usually we just kind of test that with a, a light piece of paper, turn it on, see if it's it's sucking air and it wasn't. Um, in the bathroom, the ceiling uh, above the shower had chronic dampness, loose plaster. The shower head was loose. And then it looked like there was some repairs done throughout the kitchen, however, <coughs> there was some uh, construction dust around. So normally cleaning would be the responsibility of the occupant. However, because this was due to construction, 
that would be the responsibility of the owner because they did some kind of repairs or construction. So um, I don't know if you have any questions on any of those. Any questions? I don't. We also have the owner of the building. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Deb is here. And uh, he is uh, represented by council. Please come up here. How are you, Mr. Deb? Thank you. How are you? You are pleased, please, please uh, sign in. Good evening, my name is John Entner, E-N-T-N-E-R. And we also have with us here today um, uh, licensed contractor Adam Knight, who uh, is um, working with the property management company that Mr. Deb has retained to assist in the management of the property, and he has been responsible for a lot of the repairs uh, that I will be going into in detail in a little bit here. Just before you begin, this is is this is this a dwelling occupied now? Yes. This, and how long will it be occupied for? It was an. That's an interesting question. <laughs> so, um, it should be vacated this Saturday by the tenant. Some very important context for this particular situation, and I apologize, this may take a little bit just because there is a lot going on. Um, the tenant is moving out this Saturday, supposed to be moving out this Saturday. In April, when she was served with a notice to quit for failure to pay rent, she contacted our office and negotiated a settlement that would provide for her to find um, housing and that she would vacate on or before July 1st. The pattern of behavior with this particular tenant has been that when she is notified that she can no longer reside there, she immediately takes steps to ensure that she can buy time. She delays by not responding to phone calls, text messages, or emails. She contacted the Metro Housing Boston because she is a recipient of um, some rental assistance funds and has requested multiple inspections over the course of the past year. Mr. Debs intention all along with this property has been to move into it, to downgrade now that he's in the twilight years of his life with his wife, they want to move into a smaller home, and she's currently occupying that home. Uh, the Metro Housing Boston has conducted multiple inspections of this property. One inspection report, the latest inspection report, was provided to uh, this board prior to tonight's hearing. Since then, there have been two, possibly three inspections that have been scheduled that have not been that have not been conducted because the tenant has delayed or pushed off the inspection or otherwise not permitted access to Mr. Deb and the property management company and the contractors to make the necessary repairs. Uh, she has, which is sort of par for the course for her. Now that she is facing an imminent move out date, even under agreement that she has signed, she is taking steps to again delay, and instead of contacting Metro Housing Boston, or Metro Boston Housing, which has a long file on this, she's trying a new avenue, which is the Burlington Board of Health. That's why she contacted Burlington for this particular inspection. Uh, the, there are some pieces to the inspection that we you know, would dispute. First of all, the washer and dryer were not provided to her on move-in. I provided a copy of the lease at the time from when she moved in uh, to the board that lists the only appliances as the necessary kitchen appliances, a stove and a refrigerator. Uh, washer and dryer were not on the premises when she moved in. She has provided those and put those in, but that has been a constant source of uh, citations also from Metro Boston Housing until we provided them with the lease, in which point they said, okay, well, the next inspection that we have will remove those, and there's been no next inspection for that. Uh, the issues with the uh, back railing and the back deck, the back deck is something that was cited by Metro Boston Housing as well for structural issues. Uh, Mr. Deb. Uh, who I believe some people in the room may know because he's a longtime Burlington resident and is a respected member of this community <laughs> and he's a member of our Conservation Commission, correct? Yes. yes. He, he is also a licensed engineer and not wanting to appear any impropriety, not wanting the appearance of any impropriety, 
got another licensed engineer to work with him and with Mr. Knight regarding the structural repairs to the back deck. I believe the things that are currently being cited on the back deck are pre-existing non-conforming conditions, and I understand there's some overlap between the Board of Health inspections and ISD inspections that will come up. Um, but those would be pre-existing non-conforming conditions. Uh, our concern primarily, I think, is with the basement. You can see from Metro Boston Housing's inspections that they also cited the basement, but their citations were a little bit different. They cited that there was a lot of clutter and refuse that were tenant problems down there. They never cited any water damage, they never cited any leaky pipes, they never cited any other conditions. I'm not saying that those conditions don't exist, but what I'm proposing to this board is that now we have a tenant who is looking at having to move out in four days who is creating conditions in an attempt to delay. Uh, it's a big concern for me as an attorney, obviously, you can imagine that would be a concerning situation, uh, but I, I fully believe that that's what's happening here. Uh, the list of Metro Boston Housing's uh, inspections most recently, there is a column on the right-hand side that has a T as the header. Those are conditions that are tenant-created conditions, and you can see that the vast majority of those conditions that were cited by Metro Boston Housing were tenant-created conditions. So we're running into a pattern of behavior here, and while I don't want to cause too many problems. I understand this is the first hearing for this particular board. It's my first version of this hearing as well. As Mr. Deb's attorney, I need to start preserving the record for what I anticipate may eventually be a housing court fight over what she is and is not doing at that particular property. Um, Mr. Knight has uh, assembled a list of the dates and times when he has attempted to contact her to access the property to make repairs where she has said she's not available or pushed him off. The, re the construction refuse and debris in the kitchen that was cited is because she allowed them to come in and fix an emergency condition which was a leaking, wa leaking water in the, in the kitchen. When the initial repairs were completed, she did not permit them to re-access to finish the repairs, to sand, to paint, to clean. She refused access to the unit yet again. She's delaying yet again. So what I would like to propose to this board, and I'm certain Mr. Deb is happy to answer any questions the board may have. Mr. Knight is also willing to answer any questions that the board may have for him as well. Uh, but what I'm proposing to the board, because I don't know exactly what your powers entail for this, and I'm sure that'll be an interesting piece of discussion, we would propose either rescinding the orders of violation, the violation orders and the correction orders, or delaying them for a period, their enforcement for a period of several months to permit Mr. Deb the necessary time to remove the tenant from the premises, to make the necessary repairs to the premises before he takes occupancy of the, of the property. And I'm, ha I'm also happy to answer any questions too. I'd like to hear from Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Knight and uh, and who else, Mr. Uh, Mr. Deb and Mr. Knight. Mr. Deb. Well, Mr. Deb. I'm happy to answer Mr. any questions. Mr. Knight, you are the con you are the <coughs> and you have another person here also. Uh, no, it's just the just the three of us. Just me. Please, Mr. Knight, tell us what. <coughs> So I have an inspection <coughs> done by Metro Boston. I reached out to the tenant on January 10th. We made multiple attempts to go into the unit. Day of, she would cancel at 8 a.m., 7.30. This continued on for 37 days. Finally, I asked if we could do the outside stuff. Um, where I don't need access to the inside. She claimed that uh, she was sick or whatnot. Um, she didn't answer for 16 days. And then she came up with a text saying that I could do the outside stuff and I only had till the 28th of February to complete the job. Um, 28th of March, sorry. Um, so we started right away, got it done in probably one, two, four days. I asked to go back in so I could take some pictures. We were outside the house and she denied us access for pictures of what we completed, which was the entire list that Metro gave us. Um, 
And what was that exactly, the, what you did for four days? What, what, you, what you appeared? So I have the entire list right here. Do you want me to read it off to you? Please, please. All right. And we thank you for coming. Oh yeah, no problem. Um, <coughs> so the outside repairs were three new deck boards, a new ledger board, new deck hammer, hangers for the framing, four new four by four PT post, replace the rim joist, repair of the railings, that's the stair railings and the railings on the deck themselves. We added braces, four by four braces all around. Um, a few new store tr stair treads and new blocking on the stairs underneath. What date was that? Or what date? was, we started on the 27th. Of February? Of February, correct. And we were done by May 1st. I mean, I'm sorry, March 1st. Um, that's for the outside stuff is what we did. The interior repairs were new doorbell, anti-tip brackets on the stove, fix the chip in the tub, replace the kitchen light and, din and dining room light, install brighter bulbs in the kitchen fan. The tenant would complain about the brightness of her bulbs. Um, replace the door in the bedrooms. Two were not installed be due to her significant other and her dog, so she had to hold the dog into one room. She wouldn't let us go into that room. Um, we fixed the basement doorknob. We fixed the railing to the basement, fixed the CO detectors, and repaired one doorknob. Thank you very much. That's what we did. Just for clarification, that was also 227. I just want to get clarification on yeah. what you're saying. That was February 27th as well? Between February 27th and, and March 1st. 1st. Thank you. Yes. Uh, when you said that, I believe you said, and I've read that in the lease, that there's assistance <coughs> assistance with the with the uh, rent for the renter, correct? Correct, that's correct. And, and prior to the assistance, usually those that section who provides it, do they take uh, pictures prior to the renter moving in or um, did the owner as well? Did I'm not sure if Metro Boston Housing takes pictures prior that. to moving in. I've, I've dealt with them on several cases now and the files, putting it delicately, seem to be haphazardly kept. Do they do a walkthrough or? Do I don't, they, they do an inspection of a property before they will enter into the contract with the owner for the rental assistance. I don't believe, I don't know if there are pictures taken, however, it does have to pass. There can't be any violation notices. So then they re-inspect, I believe, annually and any, um, any violations that come up have to be repaired. If there's a situation where there are nagging failure to make repairs, they will withhold the payment of their portion of the rent until those repairs are made. Uh, Mr. Deb is receiving still the rent from Metro Boston Housing, despite the um, despite the notices that he's been getting and the repeated inspections, because they they understand he's making an effort and and the things that largely the things that remain are tenant cost conditions. So. Yeah, I have questions. Um, so how long has she been a tenant in, with you? More than five years. So she's been there five years. And um, when was the first time you received a complaint from her on conditions? Oh, Mr. Deb received the first notice of violations from Metro Boston Housing um, this past summer, I believe, in 2022, is that correct? Um, yeah, 2022. So you haven't, in the three years prior to that, you didn't receive any complaints from her? Last five, uh, out of five years, last uh, three years, no complaint, nothing, everything is okay. As soon as I gave her, told her to leave, because I want to move in there, that's where the problem started. And that was in the summer of 2022? April 2022. April 2022. And, and you, the pictures that are in the, our board deck, um, which I think you've seen the pictures in our board deck. I, ha I have not seen those photos. I don't know if no, you I have. I have copies. Yeah. <clears throat> so is that the condition, uh, like you agree that's the c current condition of the property? Let me see. 
Well, I don't know if Mr. Dev has had access to the property. I know I, that but Mr. Mr. Knight has, but I think Mr. Knight was last in the property back in February, late February, correct? Or well, No, we, you were there recently with the kitchen, correct. So, Susan, these pictures are from our inspection? Yes, these are the pictures that And what date was that on? Uh, what date was that, Sam? The inspection? Yeah. Oh. The 14th? Yeah, the 14th. 14th of uh, June? Yes. Okay, so there's the, these are the pictures. Uh, and she wouldn't let me inside. I did look at the railing that you were talking about going up the side. It's the it's ladder, but it is a pre condition, it's all condition. And Excuse me. The only other question I so but you you would agree that there are issues that need to be fixed that are out of, either out of compliance or that are a safety hazard today. Um, I don't know without accessing it if we can agree to that for for legal purposes. Well, you've seen somebody has seen the deck. You would assume that you would be you would agree that at least the deck itself needs to be torn down. It's not up to current code. Well, we would agree that the deck currently is repaired pursuant to the inspections from Metro Boston Housing, and the portions that are not repaired are pre-existing non-conforming conditions. Correct, but it's it, there are they're not up to current code and probably needs to be totally uh, re replaced. I would disagree with the statement that because it's not up to current code, it needs to be replaced. Okay, so you would you agree that it's a safety hazard? And I don't want a legal runaround. Can you just answer the question? Do you agree that there's probably a safety hazard there that needs to be re repaired? It's like asking a little bit like asking a duck not to swim to, for me not to talk. Well, no, I just want the truth. Time. I mean, would you would you want your little kids playing on the back deck? Uh, I I don't have any little kids. I think with the repairs that have been done, I'd be fine with my nieces and you nephews okay. playing on it. All right. um, if as far as can we put that on the record? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. As far as as far as you know, whether or not pre-existing non-conforming conditions are inherently unsafe and therefore must be repaired. I didn't say that. I just asked the question. Do you agree that there needs to be repairs and that some of the conditions are unsafe? That's a compound question. Let's all take it in parts. So I agree sure. there are things that need to be repaired, absolutely. Okay. Uh, as far as their safety or not, I, I, I can't speak to their safety or not. Okay. That's our job, I guess. I, I, I guess I guess the issue is, I'm going to ask Mr. Knight, you fix the back. If, in case of a fire right now, could someone get out the back, down the, down the stairs safely, on the deck and down the stairs as an egress? That's what bothers me. That's about the only thing. If there was a fire in the house, can someone... Can they would get? Could they safely get out of the house by going down the deck and down the stairs? Sure, if she moved the trash and stuff. I would say yes. Uh, and the trash is, is her problem, but I just want to make sure yes, that we're stairs. not we're not rescinding or we're not changing anything. You repaired it three months ago or so, that they they could safely open the door, walk down the deck, and walk out the house. Yes, they can. Okay. Is there access from, I, I, I drove by, but I obviously haven't been inside the house. Is there access from the garage to the house, or is that separate? No. It's a separate, so it's Sorry. only the back door and the front door. Ed, I would, I would ask you to ask the same question to our staff that inspected the property if they felt the same. Did you feel the same way? Could someone safely walk out the deck and walk? I would say no, because the railings are moving which you know if somebody needed the railing it's not you know it was very unsafe and there were several boards that felt like you might go right through them so um, to me that is not a safe egress and the railing was also missing you know a board and and besides the laddering effect it was missing a whole piece going down the stairs was that missing before do we know that, if that was missing? It wasn't cited on anything from Metro Boston Housing, so as of the last inspection, which again, admittedly was several months ago at this point, um, that wasn't a condition that Metro Boston Housing cited when they were citing the deck extensively. I mean, in the lease it says the tenant shall be responsible for cleaning and maintenance of interior and exterior of the property. Right? Yeah, I'm not really worried. About yeah, I'm but more I, worried about the safety and issues. And we don't know if it was there before, right? We don't know if that... Well, I mean, just yeah. look at the picture. I don't think that exactly. just happened overnight. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so theoretically, <clears throat> the tenant will be out Saturday. Correct. Theoretically. Correct. And theoretically, that today is Tuesday, if... I'm not sure how, how this works. 
a contractor like Mr. Knight could go, could begin the process of fixing that back. So at some point, it would be a, the safety issue would be taken, would be fixed. It has to be fixed anyway for Mr. Depp to come in. Agreed. Move in that direction. We're talking about four, uh, four days of a possibility of somebody, actually Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, three days of somebody being in that house with a possible safety situation on the egress. Is that correct? Uh, yes, I think that is a correct statement. But, but where I think he's going, and, to, and I'm totally sympathetic to the fact, um, uh, and don't uh, misconstrue my questioning as not being sympathetic as I am, um, but I think he's what he's saying is that she will still be there on July 2nd because that's the reason why she's filing the, um, and like, it's speculative, right? She's not here that we can talk to her, but uh, uh, I understand it. But that still doesn't, in my opinion, eliminate the fact that there are safety issues that we need to, to uh, in my opinion, uh, and repairs that need to happen that we need to vote on. I mean, the repairs have to be done anyway if Mr. Depp is going to move in, you know, at some point. Right, but Correct. if we tell them that there are repairs that need to, if we vote on it, tell them that there's repairs, she has kind of a stay of execution, if you will, the tenant does. Is, is, is what I'm su is assuming is what you're saying. She can delay her eviction. I think she's attempting to delay her eviction. Whether or not she'd be successful in any of that is, you know, honestly, and this is my straightforward, most honest assessment I can give you from the housing court. A little bit of a coin flip at the moment. Housing courts kind of do what they like to do. We have an agreement that's signed by her uh, that waives all defenses where we can walk in and get an execution and a judgment. I don't know if the courts are open on Monday. I suspect they are not. Um, so that would mean the earliest we could get into in front of a judge and get an execution would be a Wednesday, which means the earliest we could get a move out would be Friday, given the statutory notice period. So if she's not out on Saturday, we're looking at at least another week. Uh, and then I think, I think to your concerns, Mr. McSweeney, I, I think there is a, to the extent that there is a safety concern and, and you're interested in repairs happening as soon as possible, there is still always the, the elephant in the room, which is, she's really difficult to get a hold of. And she's difficult to um, schedule things, even outdoor work. So, you know, Mr. McKnight told you guys the timeline previously. It would not surprise me if there was another 30-day delay where she would refuse access, even on a safety violation, where we have 24 hours to get things moving. So. Sam, how many, you oh, went, I'm sorry, you went out to do the inspection when she called, right? She, did she return your phone call when you were coming out for the inspection? Yes, she did. Well, yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I know. Can't, I can't speculate. Exactly. But, yeah. um, and we, you uh, called to tell her that. I attempted to call her um, yesterday, and there was. No and she was invited this evening, I'm assuming. Right? Yes, Sam sent her the the parents letter via email, right? I mailed it, and I also emailed her separately and, and let her know online? about the meeting. No, there, sure. neither one of them people online responded. I don't know. If <coughs> but um, one thing I do want the board to know, so the housing code requires that um, tenants provide access to make repairs. Sure. And I believe that's 48 hours, am I correct on that? Yes. 48 hours. Right. So if they call them today, that means she must, you know, in call tomorrow, which a reasonable right. amount of time sure. is 40, 48 hours. That's what they consider reasonable access. So you can't call them you know, in the morning and say I'm coming at two o'clock. So they need to provide a reasonable amount of time, which the which they consider to be 48 hours. So I'm assuming you haven't tried to contact her to make the repairs, but if they did try to contact her to make the repairs and she didn't allow access in 48 it's hours, so it's, on her. it's on her. Yeah. It's on her that she did not allow access. So that's something that we need to document you know, to, to be able to say that. And we, we don't have any documentation for that. We don't know if they called her, if she would allow access or not. I mean, she has a history of that. That's what they're saying she does. But, but we, can't, we, we can't say does, that. Does she have children? And you know the ages? It's two. It's it's two, right? Yes, I think she has two kids. Do you know um, the ages? Yes, she has. Approximate, do you know approximate ages of the children? 
uh, uh, it, daughter? At least one is school aged because that was a discussion we had about her moving out after the end of the school. Like elementary? Oh, yeah, they don't know it. Um, yeah. uh, the daughter, I think she she I passed. Um, she graduated from Burton School. Probably. Like middle school age, yeah. like ten, they twelve. Did, yeah, one of them was like ten. Yeah. One, right? Small. And I did try to contact her as soon as she gave her report. Oh, recently? Yeah, I did on the on the. She gave it to her on the thirteenth. 14th? 14th, I think it was the 14th. 14th right? was the 14th. 15th was when you guys got the letter. Yeah. So that was the. So day. I contacted her that following Friday, and okay. she didn't answer her phone. She didn't answer the door. I just went there because uh, I wanted to see the railing, um, and she still didn't answer the door. And then when I was out back, she let her dog out. So, I mean, so you um, had to leave because of the dog? Well, she pulled it back in after I. I've had a conversation with her more than, you know, probably 30 times. So I explained who I was, and then she brought the dog back inside. And I walked the, I walked on the entire deck. There's nothing that would fall through. The railing, when you go down it and, and wiggle at the bottom post, has a little bit of wiggle, which I have pictures of it too, and I actually have a video too. And, but at the top, where it meets at the landing, it's, it's sturdy, so, and the, the boards aren't rotted or anything. There's, there's a couple that are iffy, but they're not they're not rotted. You can't be, you know, and if you hit it with a hammer, it's not gonna alleviate it to nothing. Uh, and if I may also, there is the requirement that tenants provide access with 48 hours notice, but if the tenant will not provide access, we are not permitted to go. Sure. Um, you know, the uh, I have a case currently pending in housing court in Suffolk County, um, in the, the Eastern Housing Court, where we attempted to get access for safety purposes for um, smoke detectors, electrical issues. They denied us access. We're now waiting on a month that the court hasn't acted on our motion for access. So if we can't get access from her, we cannot access the property until an authority gives us the ability to go with a sheriff. Yep. Right. So, yeah. Do, does the, do we as the board of health, would, would Sam go back in? I mean, I know there were, I saw some of your pictures where it looks like there's droppings. I mean, would you go back in? Yeah. What's the requirement to go back in? and After the reinspection. Yeah, we do a reinspection when the owner lets us know that the repairs have been made. Mm -hmm. But if they can't get in, how do what do, what what do we do from the board of health? Well, then if they, they can't, can't get do in, a then the owner's not allow, if the occupant isn't allowing access, yep. and therefore they are now in violation of the housing code because they're okay. not allowing access. That seems like the next step. Right? But we don't know, like we don't have documentation that they've tried to contact her except what he said. Right? Well, so. What do you need as far as documentation? Well, usually what happens is, um, you know, the, the, the owner will call and say, they're not allowing us access. And then, I, you know, the inspector will then call the, the occupant and say, hey, they said you're not allowing uh. access. Why are you not allowing access? And either it's something like, oh, they just called me this morning or I'm not feeling well or whatever. And then we will tell them, you need to provide them access. So we notify them that they have to provide access. We haven't had that conversation. Right. Yet. Are they still paying rent? Yes, uh, because it's assistance. So yeah. Metro Boston Housing is paying their portion of the she rent. She hasn't paid her. She is not paying her portion since of the rent. Since? Oh, since. Almost two years. Yeah. A little bit less than two years. Um, so what is our responsibility yes, here? Responsibility. You know, he, he, you know, it sounds like she's not going to move Saturday. <laughs> it sounds like she's not going to move Saturday. She's uh, yeah, 42, 40. Well, I, I don't know if we wait. take that that's our yeah, I mean, burden to vote on, but right? They can so. begin, you know, they can begin. It says that time frame for compliance means that they must start the, pro start the action in, tw in 24 hours. Is that right, and the action would be attempting to contact her and tell her we want to come. You right, know, but if she says no. And make repairs, and if she says no, then they would let us but know. It but like isn't that where we are? That did that, that's so where we are. That's where we are. the next step? And well, the next, the, the yeah. next step uh, should be they're a not there yet. tonight. Yeah, they're so not there yet. Okay. We're not in that process yet. You know. 
Well, it sounded to me like we could be in that process. Well, very quickly. Yeah. No, but you were out there this week, right? Or contact her this week? June 16th. So it would be now up to him to contact us, Sarah, right? Sam, but Sam. Yeah, I'm sorry, Sam. Yeah. He's telling us right now. So yeah, he's telling us right now there. that they, yeah. So this is what the hearing's about. They have to. I agree. So yeah. let's let's, let's before, at this point in time we need to discuss it as a board. Yeah. yeah. So I guess according to the the process that I have to fulfill, is there anything else you need to tell us? We're not done, but. Uh, as for uh, droppings and things like that, we do have records. Uh, that was something that was early on in Metro Ho uh, Boston Housing's inspections. We do have records from an exterminator who went to that property to try to treat it, was not granted access, did what he could around the outside, and said, that's all I can really do. So. Okay. Uh, I'd like to say something for you. Joe, please. Well, I, think, I think one of the biggest things here, if he plans on moving in, which he does, He's gonna fix all this stuff. That's that's the biggest thing. He's not gonna have, you know, mice and whatever else is in it. He's gonna clean the house. He's gonna fix the roof and fix the windows and fix the deck and all that stuff. I think we're just our hands are tied with who we're dealing it, with. Well, yeah, tenant. but unfortunately ours are too. We, have, too. we have we got a complaint of safety concerns and mm -hmm. they're notable complaints. Mm -hmm. And now we have to. I, I get. I'm sympathetic to you for yeah. sure. Dealing with. Now I've been dealing with this since January, so. Are you employed by Mr. Deb? Am I? Yes. No, uh, Mr. Knight is. I've never met Mr. Deb before tonight. <laughs> no, actually, <laughs> Mr. Knight is Martin employed by Martin Property Management or Martin Home Management, which is the property managers that Mr. Deb has hired to sort of handle I, this. Well, I'm a subcontractor. He's so a subcontractor. Right. Property I management. Understand. I understand. So, Martin Property Man Management has given me the okay to fix anything that I need to fix. Okay. As long as I'm allowed access. So, so I mean, our hands are tied here. You know, she falls down the flight of stairs tomorrow afternoon, and we didn't, and we voted not to fix this. Then we are responsible. We're stuck between a rock and a hard place here. But he wants to. You're not going out of Burlington, right? Nope. <laughs> I have been Burlington. that far since 1982. <laughs> yeah. So, so what I'm saying here is, is that we're stuck too. That we have a legal responsibility for providing safety. But we understand the situation. So it was a time frame for deck, deck disrepair to, to at least bring it to a safe measure is 24 hours. So all we can say is, is to hold these and you try to get it fixed. Just, just try to get it, of if course. she doesn't answer the phone. I just want to make it clear. I myself is a registered professional structural engineer and safety is my first priority. Sure. So, so, yeah, sure. But if you can't, but if but if she's not going to move out, and that's the, access. That's the issue. Access and, is the issue. And I certain. And I certainly sympathize with the position that the board is in as well. I understand that you guys are, your hands are tied. You have a mandate to ensure the safety and health of the the citizens of Burlington. Uh, I appreciate that you understand my hands are tied a little bit. Some of this is a little bit of an exercise in public record keeping and and setting a, a record for whatever may come next. That we took the steps we needed to, that you guys are taking the steps that you need to, so that if things escalate, we can go into a court and show a judge that everybody has been doing things as best as we can throughout the process, so. And it's, it's a small ranch house, probably you all know. So I hired a property management company where I'm getting rent less than $2,000. <laughs> I understand. Okay. So. Just to take care of the tenant. Just to take care of the tenant because I'm busy, I don't get time, and she might have some problem, and this is 24-7. So at this point in time, I think all the testimony is in, so I have to close the hearing, So and then we can discuss it. Motion to close. Second. Second. And I, I have to uh, then go through uh, 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 Ms. Welch. Aye. Ms. Sheehan. Aye. Ms. Sweeney. Aye. And I vote aye. It's closed. Now as a, as a board, we can talk about this and to, and to decide on what to do here. And I, I just want to thank, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Ebner. Entner, Entner, yes. I'm sorry. You did a very nice job. Thank you. Mr. Dan, Mr. Entner, did a very nice job. Anyway, we will let, let us know what's going on here. Um, I think the only thing we can do is to uh, to uphold this correction order, and they go ahead and make a phone calls. And if she doesn't want to 
to uh, get, provide access to call is to, to let the board of health know if you call if you call tomorrow and if they give you access, let us know immediately. At least we can we know what's going on. I think that's the issue here. And if he gives you access, you're going to fix it anyway because Mr. Depp is going to stay in Burlington. So, Mr. Chair, can I um, can we talk about the maybe eliminating the washer and dryer sure. um, complaint from the from the order? And maybe even the construction dust. I do think that's on the tenant or the home, or the occupant. Um. If a cleaning is on the occupant, however, if it's a um, construction, it's because you went in and you repaired something, <coughs> then that is on the owner. On so the owner. Sam, I don't know if you want to add to that, but she felt that it will look like it was due to construction and not the normal type of dust, correct? Yeah, it was it was from when they repaired the the ceiling in the kitchen. It was all the the right. dust. That comes so, but was the ceiling on. fully repaired? Like was it? There was. It looked like it hadn't been sealed in some spots, and right. it wasn't painted or anything. But it, it looked like it was so new. You you did. Did. But if you can't get yeah. back in, so that it doesn't kind of shine over. But the dust on job. the counter isn't that still the occupant? Like to wipe the dust off the counter? If it's just plain household dust, then yes. So right. So How did they do ceiling repair the if they couldn't get in? So, but let me make sure I understand this. If she, if they call her, she refuses access, as we have heard, and then she moves out on Saturday. Then the house is, the house is empty. It's then vacant. And then it's vacant. This is moot. Right. It is moot. The housing code refers to tenants. <laughs> tenants. So because as a tenant, and I think he referred to like pre-existing conditions yeah. with regards to the the deck, the balusters, sure. the deck. That is in the housing code. If right. Mr. It, you know, if Mr. Deb moves in, no one's ever going to know if he has the. I agree. If he, to, right. if he wants to, right. If he wants to live in non-code, right. owner, it's sure. owner occupied. So, 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 if she refuses. I mean, you can try tomorrow. She refuses access, and then moves out Saturday. This is all moved anyway. Correct. Because we know unless, that, uh, well, if unless he's going to move in, as long as he doesn't get another tenant. No, no, I'm not getting tenant. I, I, I'm going to move in. Fix. But I have to do a lot of work there before I move in. Hey, you have to do a lot of work? Right. So at a minimum, we can remove the washer and dryer. Uh, and you could, I mean, you can... You, do whatever you, you want. Yeah. If you want to take out the dust one. Uh, I mean, I, you know... I think we should. I mean, it, whether it's, uh, it's drywall, dress, dust. I mean, but that's a 30 them. days. No matter what, she'll be gone in 30 days. Is that? <laughs> yeah. You've never dealt with tenants before, court. right? Did anybody, <laughs> do a, did anybody do a ceiling repair? <laughs> well, he, yeah, he did. And oh, they you, went, you did. He was coming back the next day to okay. refinish it, and he, oh, she wouldn't let him back he in. He couldn't get back in the kitchen. Yeah. I think I, I'm comfortable removing that one as well, right. but that's just me. I have no problem with yeah. moving that one and move, removing the, the washer and dryer. Right. The washer and dryer. And then just uphold the others, and this will work out itself, hopefully, within a day. Well, so what would happen would be we would uphold the order, the one, other than the three that you said to remove, mm -hmm. or if you vote on it, to remove it. And then they would contact or try to contact the tenant, let us know how that goes, if you're able to get in contact with her, if you're able to schedule a date 48 hours out, remember it has to be the 48 hours out, let us know what that date is. Once that date rolls around, if she doesn't provide you access, let us know, and then we will call her back and then document, if she doesn't return our calls, we're documenting she's not returning our calls, she's not responding to our emails or she's saying something else. See, I don't want, I want to be as fair as parsed because, you know, the-, the And, and the best way to do that, I don't know how you normally uh, contact her, but if you're gonna do an email, if you copy us on the email, then we have the email chain as far as what's going on. That's usually the best way to do it, um, is through email. So does that sound fair? That we have all these, they try tomorrow, and we move on for that? Yeah, Mr. Chair, I can make a motion uh, if you will let me. Well, this is just the four of Yeah. Well, you have to still vote on it, right? Correct. Yeah. Uh, are you done with discussion? No. Oh. Um, to uphold the correction order for 
What's the address? Four, Ledgewood Drive, minus the three conditions uh, I mentioned. Which would washer and dryer. I think there's two with the washer and dryer and with. Washer and dryer and then. In the debris. debris. Yeah. Hopefully it'll all work out by Saturday. Yeah. Do have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Four zero. I think that's the best way. Thank you so much for coming. I, I, I want to be as fair as we possibly can. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very Mr. much for your time and attention and your great questions. Very much appreciated. And <laughs> I'm sure they were. I, yeah. I, I hope it didn't come across as attacking you guys at all either. We really appreciate the work you're doing and, and the opportunity to uh, to come present. Thank, Thank you. For coming. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and board members. Best of luck. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, we'll leave the photos right here for you guys. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah, thank you. Okay. We need another hearing, and that is 111 Middlesex Turnpike status report on nuisance condition MGL 111. I need a motion to open that hearing. So moved. I have a motion by uh, Ms. Welsh, second by? Second. Second by uh, Ms. Sheehan. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, I gotta call them, I'm sorry. Ms. David? Aye. Sweeney? Any, Andrea? Aye. Mary Beth? Aye. And I vote aye. We're open hearing. And now the presentation will be by our Director of Public Health. Yeah, so um, the, <coughs> the uh, information in your packet has, um, is the uh, letter that was given to the owner after the last meeting that they were at, <coughs> outlining what they agreed to do. And one of those things was to complete um, the drain, cleaning out the drainage basin by March. Um, that time has gone by. And um, I did reach out to them around April, May. Uh, Mary uh, from the property manager, and she had said, uh, Yes, we're expecting it to happen. And it, just, it never happened. And now we're looking to them for a status report on where they are at now. So that's where we're at. There really is no new information other than, you know, the, the condition is continuing there. Um, there's still a lot of water there, um, and nothing really has changed. Anybody else? Mr. Vaughn, I've been out there a bunch of times. So has, I think, all of us have been out there a bunch of times. The amount of water there is just unbelievable. And this spring now, I worry not only about the safety of the issue, but also uh, mosquitoes. Mosquitoes. I went out there one day and it was bubbling. Have you been out there and seen it? I have been out there and seen it, yeah. It, bubble, I, uh, it yeah. bubbles. I haven't seen the bubbling, but I, yeah, I do understand that. I, I have pictures of the bubbling, but I can't, you know, those are just my pictures of the bubbling up. It's like, a, almost, it's, it's it's like a hot springs. It's bubbling up. Looks like Yellowstone. It's bubbling up, and I've been to Yellowstone. That's what it looks like. And uh, clearly, the situation there is much worse than it was the last time you represented that client and was here. It's much worse. It's much, much worse. I know that they have cordoned the area off, but doesn't help with mosquitoes, doesn't help with vermin, doesn't help with everything else there. And the issue is getting worse. And if the amount of water continues to seep to where it is this this winter, I can't see anybody parking in that in that uh, safely in, in any of that park, parking lot area of that parking lot. So uh, I'll I don't know what else would you I know Mr. Masweeney, you've been out there <laughs> many times. Hey Mark, how are you? I'm well. I'm well. <laughs> Nice to see you all for the record attorney, Mark Vaughn, with Green River Broads, re representing the, uh, the applicant, Bricksmore, uh, who could not be here in person. I think uh, Mary did communicate that to you, Susan, so I uh, drew the, the, the lucky straw to be here. But I have communicated with Bricksmore on it, and uh, if I may, just, I, yeah, so, um, Susan, you're correct. I mean, the intention was for that basin cleaning to happen in the springtime, March, April time frame. Um, I've actually learned a lot about this over the past couple of days, but uh, and f just for the board's recollection, we have this, uh, there's an endangered species that's in that basin, the bridal shiner fish, 
and there are two permits evidently that's required from Mass uh, State Heritage uh, in order to do the work. One is that permit that uh, I think we had talked about before, which is good for five years to do the basin cleaning. It was last issued in 2017, good for five years. That was applied for again, uh, and it was issued in, uh, I believe it was um, April of, uh, of oh, the, the, the end of February, it was issued this year. But uh, yeah, late February, February 27th, I believe. But there's another permit that was required, a fish collection permit to actually relocate the, the fish, uh, and that's good for a year time frame. That permit wasn't issued by the state natural heritage uh, until sometime in late April. On a, and because the breeding season for the fish is from May 1 to August 30, they weren't in a position to do the work and have it not go into the, the mating season. So. Suffice it to say that the contract is lined up for the uh, company to come out there and do the basin cleaning. It's gonna happen as soon after August 30th, which is the magic date. Um, it, it's a National Water Main is the, is the company that's been contracted. They've done it in the past as well, so they're familiar with the work and what needs to be done. So uh, bottom line is that it's going to be done this fall. I, I believe it would be done in September, soon after that August 30th date, and you know, our expectation, as we've talked about before with the board at our prior meeting that we had back in November, is that that is going to uh, make a difference in terms of what you saw out in the, the field, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Weiner. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not sure what the delay was in terms of why the permit it took as long as it did for the uh, state to issue, but that's kind of the, the situation we're in. Uh, kind of caught between a rock and a hard place or caught between a fish and a pond, I guess. Um, so, Mr. Chair. Please. Yeah, so Mark, uh, Mr. Vaughn, I sympathize for you, but I, I, I honestly, we've been going with Bricks Bar on this for almost five years, probably over five years now. They've been in front of the board at least twice in the past year and a half. And when they came in front of the board back in November, I believe it was, um, we we were going to take action against them, penal, penalization action against them at that point in time, and they promised that they were going to do the necessary steps to clean the basin after the winter and remove the Jersey barriers. And now we're in a condition much worse than it was in April. The Jersey barriers are a joke. It looks ridiculous out there. You've lost at least a dozen parking spots because of the Jersey barriers and probably more. And not on top of that, and I think Dr. Weiner was being kind to say that, uh, you know, he saw it bubbling. There is litter, trash, and I was out there this afternoon, I was out there last week. Litter and trash floating in there. There was actually, you have a beautiful estuary there. There's frogs swimming in it, living in it. There's a family of ducks uh, swimming around, and the mallard came after me today, which I'm fine with, I love it, <coughs> except it's a parking lot, Mark. And it's a parking lot in the town of Burlington. Bricks Moore is making money off the residents of Burlington. And for some reason, we can't get their attention to fix this. I would love to understand the date they filed the permit for the, the fish wildlife, because they're aware that they have to get a permit from them, because they had that issue, I remember, two years ago with um, moving the, the endangered fish. So I would love to understand the date that they filed that permit. So I, I know that it was filed in January for the, the five-year renewal, and that was issued. That's the basin, the yeah. yeah, I'm talking about the, the fish I, I don't know when that was, a, I don't have that in front of me. I know it was issued, um, I have it right here. This is the scientific collection permit, which is the permit that's good for until the end of the calendar year. So that was uh, dated May 8th, 2023, although I do have an email indicating interim approval that was granted for that April, I think it was um, 19th, but that didn't allow enough time to actually mobilize and do the work between April 19 and, and May 1. I understand so that. They should have filed, the should have filed the permit in December, uh, as soon as they left the board meeting. Like, I just don't feel like they're taking accountability for the issue at hand. I know they don't feel like it's their responsibility because they feel like other external factors are causing the problem, and that may be the case, but that does not 
release them from the accountability of fixing the problem at all. Yeah, no, and I, I, I appreciate your your position on it. I, I can assure you, based on my conversations with them, that they're not looking to skirt the obligation. I, I don't know why it is that the permit took <coughs> as long as it did to, to issue, and um, I, I can't speak to that, but I don't think that there's any nefarious intent or a... I don't think it's nefarious. I think well, it's... Well, just a... a not taking error. the matter seriously enough. I mean, they don't... <laughs> they, they don't want to have the Jersey barriers out there blocking off that area. I, I'm wondering if there's a planning board issue there with uh, eliminating the 12 parking spots from from the. Um, well, I'm not sure there's a. Pl pl uh, I, I, I don't think there's a, a planning board issue. I mean, look, I mean, there's there's a lot going on with this in terms of you know they they've had to engage a lot of professionals and. At, at great expense to try to determine what the underlying cause is for this, because I think as we've talked about before, this has definitely changed over time. No the doubt about it. No. They, they and that's the reason why when they came in front of us in November, we right. agreed to say, okay, let's try cleaning it. Yeah. But now we have to wait almost a full year from the last time they were here. And the Jersey Berries are going to be there for a full year, almost a full year. November, I think they were put in, to September almost a full year that you're going to have Jersey barriers sitting there in a problem that is not only ugly, and, and, and they, they're not even making an attempt to clean Wendy's wrappers out of there, and, and there's fraud, like literally, I'm not even joking, there was three frogs, and if you have frogs living in there, they've been there for a while, and, and, and ducks, and there's, it's infested with mosquito larvae, you can see them swimming around in there. So there, there, this is a problem, it needs to get fixed, and I'm almost under the intent of saying, I don't want to wait till September, I would love to move to um, a penalization period. Uh, what, I don't know what our jurisdiction is over this, but as far as fining and or making letters to our sister boards about what else, what else they can do with this. But I'm at the point where we've been working with them for five years and aggressively working with them for two years, with no activity or action whatsoever. And, and, and Mark, if you can come back and say, well, they filed the permit with moving the wildlife in December or January, and, they, and, and it took that long to get the permit, and then maybe we can eliminate the, the fines. But you're, I, I guarantee you, they didn't file that permit until, and it's an assumption, that until late spring. I just, I'm, I'm at my wits ends with this. It's, it's disgusting out there. Mark, Mark can I, can I just wanted to make sure you knew I was here. Oh, who is this place? It, it, it's Mr. Mark Newman. Uh, I don't know who he is. He's with uh, Bricksmore. Oh. Yeah. Um, not on the property management side, but uh, with Bricksmore. Yeah. And whoever the K was, they raised their hand around uh, here, too. So, Mr. What's his name, please? Mr. Newman. Newman. Can you please, uh, Mr. Newman, what is your yes. first name, please? Mark Newman. Okay. And I'm with Bricksmore Property Group. Okay. I'm so not with ahead. the property management group, but I am involved with the property, and I am going to look into why the application was not timely filed. The application for, I, I think you were explaining that it was a endangered species permit that we needed to get before we could do the cleaning. Um, but I, I just wanted to make sure that you you understood that it it's it's not a lack of concern on on Bricksmore's part. We've we've been actually trying to figure out for a long time a solution to this problem. We hired a hydrologist who looked into the issue to see how we might be able to solve for it in a way that wouldn't require a complete wholesale redoing of the shopping center here. And um, the, the research that he did, and I believe the findings that were presented to this board in November showed that the, the, the main reason that water is flooding here is because the waterway that the shopping center used to drain into, that still drains into, Binebrook waterway had gone, had gone up in elevation significantly after um, two or three pumps were turned off. And, and since then, the problem has just gotten worse. And I, I, I think there, there's a, a strong desire to address it. I just think that the interim solution that we were doing, I'm going to look into it. I'm going to ask our property manager why there was a delay in 
submitting this application. They, I'm not sure when it went in, but I'll, 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 I'll get an answer. And uh, if Mr. Newman, with all due respect, and, and I appreciate you at least showing up remotely, I really do. Because I'm not saying that this is, uh, you know, malicious intent at all by, by, by Ricksmore. What I'm saying, what I'm saying is saying that is they, your team, your property management team came to the board last fall and they, and they and we were sympathetic to the fact that we realized that the water outlet is changed and the pumps were turned off. And again, that doesn't release you of the accountability of still fixing the issue, but we realized we were sympathetic and they committed to trying to clean it. And we gave them uh, six months to clean it. And they knew they were going to clean it. And, and they missed the date. Now we're gonna be sitting here another, another four months. And I, and I do think there is a lack of uh, care uh, by your property management team. I'm not saying by Bricksmore, I'm saying by your property management team because they've known of this issue for a long time and it's like been pulling teeth trying to get them to react or act on uh, certain, certain scenarios. Mr. Newman, have you, have you been out there at all? Have you seen it? I, I have, I have, and I just saw the video of the nice family of ducks that have moved into the parking lot there. Um, Sorry to hear that one of them actually attacks. But somebody. it is filthy and it is full insects. of insects. So we need, you need, you know, we spend a ton of money in this community on mosquito control because it's a low lying, it's a low lying uh, area. Something should, has to be done. Not only, we're not going to get anywhere tonight in terms of it's not going to get done tomorrow. But what needs to be done tomorrow is something in, in, to, uh, to kill the mosquitoes in there. And uh, it's, it's just, you know, it's just, you know, eastern equine encephalitis is, is uh, known to be part of this area. It's also West Nile virus because of standing water. And we've asked so many companies and, and people to, and we've done so much to kill the mosquitoes this area and then it's a huge area of standing water there should be something that that you can do because as soon as people s realize how many mosquitoes are going to be coming uh, hatching out of that area you're gonna have a problem and so are we can, can I um, can I make a, a, a suggestion if I could I, um, and I, well, I, I think oh, that oh I'm sorry I didn't ask yeah. what you just stated can they do that with that wildlife in that area I don't know I, again I don't know I'm not an expert in that area but I think that if uh, look I have no idea you, uh, there's so much water that can be pumped I don't know I, I, I you know I'm not a solution I'm not an engineer you know, if, it was, you, if, if you guys are bleeding, I could probably help. But, uh, but clearly, uh, can't you pump it back into the? I, I think it just it circles. Cycles. That's the bubbling. It's coming out from below and back out. We, we have been doing the, the the regular maintenance, you know, the, the, of the catch basins on a quarterly basis, which was also required. I think those reports have been furnished to the town. Look, I, I understand the frustration. Sure that, though, Mark. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I'm not sure if that's true. Um, well, they did send some reports. We never made it a requirement that they had to send them to us. Just that that happened. When was the last one done? I'm it looks like there's been absolutely nothing. The catch basin yeah. cleaning. I can look it up. It was grass growing. What's that? It's grass growing. In it. That's what I'm saying. There's no, mold and no. grass and everything else growing out of it. Yeah. It's actually is afternoon. There was one done in March of 23. May 10th of 23 and June. The catch basin that's in the in the parking lot. Correct. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're not able to do a lot with it just because it's 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 under water at times. But I, I admit that. But uh, yeah. So I don't know what yeah. cleaning means. I guess. Yeah. But so, but they they do go out there and do it as they're required to do. Um, look, I, I, all I can say to you is that it's going to be done. The permit is in place. It couldn't be done because of the state not issuing the permit until the end of April. Um, how it is that it took that long for the state <coughs> when it was applied for, I don't know, but I guess I would respectfully ask, rather than imposing any fine, um, if you could allow us to get the work done 
after August 30th, perhaps put this back on the agenda for, I, I don't know, maybe your you know second meeting of September or first meeting of October, so we can update you and, and confirm that you know it has been done or where we are. I guess that would be the, the preference. I mean, we're not, um, you know, Bricksmore is a, you know, they, they, they value their relationship with the town. They would like to be in a position to kind of accomplish some, some greater fixes of this situation in the years to come as part of some potential redevelopment opportunities. But it's a, it's a challenging situation, David. I, I mean, with the-, the I don't disagree. I mean, there's, been a, there's been a change of circumstances out there that- Totally agree. All we ask is for you guys to clean it. I understand. March. I understand. And I, I, I don't, uh, for some reason, it wasn't able to get approved prior to that May 1st deadline. And it, because there was lack of focus on getting the permits that they needed done in time. They knew that the dates, and they said they could commit to the dates. And not once did we ever hear back saying that uh, they filed a permit and it's taking so long. They could have picked up the phone and called the office. I'm just saying, Mark, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. I sympathized with you in November. I'm less sympathetic with, and I shouldn't say you, this is not personal, with Bricksmore today, only on the fact is there has been no activity uh, even attempted be not to be done and or collaboration with the Board of Health staff. And it's been, it's been like this for five years and it's just gotten progressively worse. And, and I think if they wanted to get this cleaned out in March, they could have cleaned it out in March and the Jersey barriers would be gone. Th that I don't know. I don't know whether the first permit needed to be in place uh, in order to and file and for the That's what I'm permit. asking. Yeah. You know, this is the hearing, right? That's what yeah. I'm asking, when was the permit filed? I, I mean, right now, I mean, I can live with what you just said, as long as they would clean it up now, it's a mess. I, I could certainly I, have to clean I, I, it up now and do yeah. something I, about it. I, I appreciate that. I'm going to make sure that that gets addressed immediately. You know, the cleanup of it. Yeah. And uh, it's just, it's a, just a, a year ago, there was a puddle. Now it's, now it's a pond. And it, if it gets worse, if it gets worse in the fall and in the winter, we're going to have to do something major about that parking lot because I don't want anybody to die. There's somebody to skid in that area. You have to close that whole parking lot down. Right. It's that bad. It's, I, I have never, I never expected to see how much more water there is today than it was last year. It was a puddle last year. What, what, and that is the reason why they obviously put the Jersey barriers up, right? To keep that well, off, them, off limits, right? I asked right. them, as you remember, I said, is there liability if, because it, because it was freezing, is there liability if someone's in here and, and, and falls? And is, is there liability, knowing full well that what was going to be there? Is that, you know, so. Uh, Did uh, somebody, Kay, um, raise their hand earlier? Uh, I don't know. I don't know who Kay is. Uh, it says Kevin. I don't know. Kevin, do, would you like to speak? Kevin? I don't know. Is Kevin part of your group? I, I don't believe so. I don't know a Kevin. But no. Uh, and, and who is SL? That's Susan. Susan. <laughs> <laughs> so you are up there. Okay. Get rid of that. So do we have any dates scheduled that the work will be started? I've been told that the contract has been signed with National Water Main. They're under contract to do the work. They can't do the work until after August 30th, which is the end of the breeding season. So it's my understanding that as soon as that date comes, they're going to mobilize and get ready to do the work. So um, I, I feel confident in saying that I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be done in the month of September, uh, barring, you know, something crazy happening. Uh, uh, thank you very much. I know you've been following this very closely. Anybody else? Ms. Lindell. Thanks for um, explaining the details to me. You're welcome. And, uh, I guess uh, we'll have to live with this, but we're not going to live with it through the through the winter. Okay, I'm, I'm, I need to tell you that we're not going to live with that through the winter because it just uh, Mr. Newman, Mr. Newman, correct? Newman. Yeah. Yes. New, Newman or Newman? Newman. It's a, a um, new, Newman. 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 Okay, Mr. Newman, we can't live with it during the winter. It's just too dangerous. So. 
So uh, I can live with it as long as you commit to cleaning it up and doing something with the insects and the vermin and everything else that's living in that area. I don't care about the frogs and the ducks. But, but no, it's beautiful, but you know, I mean, let's get them in every parking lot in town. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. I need a motion to close this hearing. So moved. I second. Motion by uh, Mary Beth Wells, second by Andrew Sheehan. Ms. McSweeney. Uh, aye. Ms. Sheehan. Aye. Ms. Welch. Aye. And I vote aye. We're closed. I guess thank you, but we're going to keep an eye on this. And it gets worse. Don't go on vacations. So wait a minute, we have to vote yeah, on. Yeah, don't we? Yeah, I mean, you know, close the hearing. Yeah, just can close the hearing. Yeah, you can have discussion, and if there's any action, you would like to take. Well, it. is there any action except? To so I, I don't know. I mean, I would really like to understand when the permit, the, the dates of the. Like, I'm almost thinking maybe we continue this hearing until July, until we get more information. Like, if the permits were not pulled until April, I think we should talk about imposing fines. Because I don't think they think that we're serious about this. I really don't. I, I, my, my gut reaction is that we should wait with that until if they haven't started in September. Is to is we g we gave them that opportunity in November to clean to clean it out. They said let's wait the winter, and they have to pull the permits. And we gave them that uh, affordability to. But if something to wait. slips in September that can't get started till October, we have early snow, and then there's ice. I mean things. I hear. Listen, here. I'm not trying to be. Uh, I'm not trying to be difficult so here because I get it, and and I get it. I'm just saying we've been putting up with this for so long, and uh, quite frankly, if a citizen comes up to you and says, or uh, is trips over the barriers, or trips into the water for whatever reason, now, now they have signs there that says "Do not enter." Like it's ridiculous. It's ugly. Well, how are you going to address that citizen? That's that's our job here. You know, I'm just saying like it, they have not put any attention or urgency behind this. And they could have left here in November and pulled both permits or filed for both permits immediately to get set for March. Would you be satisfied if we if we uh, if we postpone this to August and we ask that the contractor come before us to explain what they're going to be doing? And then we can are you I, I'm not even I'm not even like I, I believe that now that they're gonna clean it out in September. But quite frankly, um, if they clean it out in September, and we don't even know if cleaning the basin is going, going to work, and now we're going to be carried over through winter uh, in, in trying to come up with another step or another solution a whole year from now. And, and I don't think that's doing this. I think it's doing a disservice to, to Burlington. It's they're making money off of Burlington. They should be having more focus and urgency around this, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And 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 again, like I know there's there's a, like there. This is not their primary uh, business. Like I get it, but it, it it is. They make business in Burlington, and they inherited it. I get it. They bought it. They inherited this problem. It's still a problem that needs to be fixed. I I, I realize. As you said, if, it, if the clean-out doesn't work and they then what are we going to do? If they have to raise the parking lot, I don't know what they're going to do. That may not happen in the fall. I know, but it might. I mean, it's not going to happen in the fall. It's pretty draconian, and if they if they try in the fall, if they can't fix it in the fall, I just I, I'm just saying, like if they uh, file, if I may, the hearing's closed. If I may, the hearing's uh, closed. If, yeah. if the pumping, if, if the if the cleaning doesn't work, first of all, we, we already gave them the opportunity to clean. We've engaged a hydrologist. We've engaged an engineer. We've been working with the same engineer for years. We're engaging another engineer to try to help us come up with a solution. Um, but I believe that if we can't figure out how to solve this on, on the short term, we're going to have to work with the municipality on this, I right, believe. We could, have, we could have been doing that now because they would have done it on March. And we could, be do, we could be dealing with that now not in, in the winter and then have to put Jersey barriers back or leave the Jersey barriers up over the winter time because we're going to have to delay it to spring. It's just, it, it's a continuation of one after the other. We could be dealing, we could have cleaned it out in March and dealing with whatever outcome that was. That was the reason why we continued it from November and have you clean out the, the basin in March. That was the only reason why. 
I mean, dealing with the municipality, I don't know what that means. Well, I think there needs to be a well, long term. That means, that means working out, you know, again, we're, we're draining into a, a, a waterway that, that it, there's a public component to it, right? And, and that's the way that the shopping center is designed. It's, it, there's, there's, you know, I'm, I'm not sure, I don't want to overstep my bounds here because I don't understand some of the more complicated pieces of this, but that's the reason we hired a hydrologist was to understand how our property isn't draining the way that it used to. If we've, if I'm it's not me. something that's wrong with our system, if it's not something that's wrong with the, the, the stormwater retention on our property, then you have to look at where the water is going to. Mr. Newman, if I remember correctly, the hydrologist had, had, had no, no solution. solution the last time they were here. They had no idea what to do. No solution the last time they were here. I, I, I checked. They had absolutely no solution. And uh, it, 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 it's... It's a, it's, a terrible, it's a terrible area right I, I hear you, Ed, though. That was the reason why we said, okay, well, let's close it up for November and let's get it cleaned out in March. Let's at least try that. They said, let us try cleaning it first and see what happens, and then we can make some decisions after that, because maybe with regular cleaning in cleaning out the whole entire catch, catch basin, maybe that would at least solve or, or band-aid the issue. And now we're sitting, now we're not going to know that until October, and it's my gut is telling me that it's not gonna work, but if it doesn't work, then what are we gonna do? We're gonna punt it until next March, and I just don't think that's the right thing to do. I'm not saying that there's anything we can do about it because they can't open it up today anyways. They can only open it up yeah. till September. But my problem is, is that if the permit was only filed in April, shame on them, and shame on us if, if we let, let them get away with it. I, that's I, just my I, own. I, I my can own. tell you with, surety that it was not filed in April. It was filed prior to April. What, when prior to April, I, I don't know, but it, there were two separate permits that re required what I don't know is if they needed If you have a date, then I'd be satisfied to say that, yeah, I get it, it's, it's the permitting problem. But you don't have a date for us. Uh, I, I, think, I think I hear your, hear your point, and, and, I, and I think it's very important, and it is an urgent issue, and I want to make sure that we take additional steps and do what's necessary to address this. And, and I, I, we hear what you're saying with regard to the urgency of this. And we, it's going to get addressed. That's why I'm here on this call. We were told that in November, Mr. Newman, and I'm not saying that you're not good. I'm you just telling you we were told that in November. All right. So what is your, what is your pleasure at this point in time? Uh, do you want to? Do you want? To, uh, my my feeling is that we uh, we continue this hearing until until August and have the the contractor come in and explain what they're going to do and and uh, and when they're going to start it. I mean, there's nothing we can do. They can't start now. They will be the contractor in, Mister. I'm, I'm talking is, about. Is the permit? Yeah. yeah. The, um, uh, unless they unless they. What would you? What, what's going? What's going to happen? I would like to start either finding them, or writing letters to our sister boards to invest. You know, to open up their own investigations, either with planning board saying that they lost 12 parking spaces for over a year. Does there is there an occupancy issue there, and or the conservation committee? Dave, I mean, we, we yeah, we the the, the parking spaces are not capable of being used right now. That's what I'm not, saying. But it's not through our action I get I mean I'm looking at the hydrologist report and it says it's our opinion that the sustained elevated water levels in the site stormwater basement basin and adjacent parking lot ponding in recent years are related to the recent shutdown of the towns nearby Vinebrook aquifer public water supply wells I mean he went through an exhaustive analysis I, of looking I, at I, I, I mean I am 150 percent in agreement with you that this is not bricks moors fault for the problem. What I'm 150% disagreeing with you is that it's not Bricksmore's problem to fix. And just be, the, the pumps, the pumps are going to, the rest of the pumps are gonna shut down over time and it's gonna make the condition worse. And if you're saying that it's on our problem, 
uh, we have a bigger bigger issue. And you, you haven't said a, you haven't. Yeah, I, it's it, not your problem to fix. You haven't said that yet, but I'm just telling you that's the gut feeling I'm getting from 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 Bricksmore that as the town sits on more pumps, the issue is going to get worse. And if we don't look to fix it now, we're going to be in a situation where that whole parking lot's going to get be flooded. Yeah. And then where are we? Well, that's and, but that, and again, this might be a subject for another day. But that that sort of that begs the question about working with the municipality on a solution. Um, if more pumps are going to be turned off and the situation is going to get worse, I I I I'd say we have a concern as an owner of the of the the shopping center that those. I mean, we would. I, I, I have to learn more about why the pumps are being turned off. I, it's a, it's a separate going conversation. To, we're going to MWR right water. They're being shut off. And that yeah. water is not going to be drained and used anymore for drinking water. We're going to MWR right. Okay. So we shut down, I think, two pumps, I think, already. And the rest are going to be shut down over the next two years. So you, you, you're going to have a larger problem if you don't address the root cause. And if you're saying it's a municipality point, I'm telling you right now, you're not a problem. You're not going to get a anywhere with that, I don't believe. Okay. But. Well, I, I appreciate that, actually. Sort of. I mean, I, mean, I don't know what you... That, I don't, I, in, that's not a Board of Health issue. No, it's not. We're, we're, we need to focus just the but not, that's present. I agree. I'm not the cause of it worse. Whatever that is. And they're going to, so what are they, they're going to keep on. Well, we try cleaning, if they, but if we're not finding them, they're not going to fix it, is my point, or try to fix it. That's my point, you know. Um, I, I'd like you to give us a little more time. I'd like to, we'd like to certainly clean up, address some of the cleanliness issues that you were identifying today. Mr. Newman, what's your role at Bricksmore? Vice President of Redevelopment. Okay. Do um, you want to continue this to the next meeting? Okay. I'm not sure not what sure we're going to be able but uh, may I? I mean, I, I understand what you're saying. You, you, you're concerned that we just sat on our hands and didn't submit an application until April 15, knowing that, you know, the, the work needed to be done by May 1, which I, I don't believe is the case. I think there's an explanation. I mean, I don't know if they could have filed a little bit earlier than what they did or not, whether one needed to be approved before the second one could issue. But if it is something that the board is willing to entertain, we will work with property management immediately to address any issues, concerns with respect to trash, debris, mosquito, whatnot, that we can do within the, the realm of, of, of what's allowed in terms of wetlands and species and all that. I'm not sure we can go out there and spray, but um, that we will do that on an immediate basis. And if the board's willing to put this back on, I was going to suggest September so that we could tell you it, the, the, the work's been done or it's in the process of being done. Um, but I, I think that might just be a, a more um, uh, worthwhile, you know, use of everyone's time because we know we can't do the work now until after August 30th. So, uh, so thanks, Mark. So if if we say you guys come back in uh, the August, the second August, well, I guess there's only one August meeting, right? So it's the last with with uh, with the, either the contractor or the at least what they're going to do, who's doing it, the date they're going to do it, because if we wait till September, I'm hoping it's done in September. Mm -hmm. um, and then also between, like within the next week, could you email the office when the, the permits were pulled? Applied for. Applied, I'm sorry, applied for. Mr. Chairman, can I also make a suggestion? Um, so what we want to also, maybe it can be addressed if they come back at the August meeting, is the process for these permits and how they're going to avoid this happening again. So if they have to, you know, get it every five years, when are they going to reapply? How long does it take to get the permit? Especially with two permits, what is the process for those two permits? When do they have to start their process to ensure that they're going to get the, the permits again for the next cleaning school? We said March 2023, the next one would be um, March 2025. So 
Are they set up for the for the cleaning in March 2025? And how are they going to assure that it's going to be done? Well, I, I want to take that one step further. What's going to happen if they clean it? They do everything, yeah, and we have a. It's, it's, it does nothing work. What's well, their plan then we're B? Back here again. What's their plan and B? And they have, they need a plan because right now this is their plan to to make sure that the you know the condition doesn't exist. And so I, I, we don't know if it's going to work or not. So if it doesn't work, then they have to come up with another plan, basically. Right, and I, and I would like to invite the uh, our new DPW director here for that meeting. For the August meeting. The August meeting. I'd like to have him here, and maybe the town engineer and or both, and let them hear. We did that last time, and uh, they disagreed uh, about how it was going to be. But I'd like to have I'd like to have him, him invited, or one of his. Uh, does, somebody from there. Does it make sense for that to happen after the cleaning takes place, though, to see if it's working? Or I, I'm I don't know if they'll make This is what I'm afraid of, Mr. Barr. It doesn't work. The complete, we shut off the two pumps, which is going to happen soon. Shut off the two pumps, and the complete, uh, the complete uh, parking lot floods. We, and we condemn the whole area. We just condemn the whole parking lot. That puts you, puts every one of those businesses out of business. Well, are, when are these other two um, pumps going to be shut down? From, from what I hear, within the next two years. I, I don't think any date's been set yet. You know, because during the winter, it's ice. It's all ice. And uh, it's a nice shopping center. It's a nice shopping center. I, I shop there. I shop at the, uh, at, you know, uh, so, Mark, I think, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of with that to a certain extent. Like, I think, like, when you come in, in August, maybe, and you might not have it fully sketched out, but, uh, you know, kind of a thoughts around what the plan B is, because I think if we wait till September, it's going to take some time, and it's not rainy season, although we get some, you know, rain in, in October, we're going to, we're not going to know if it worked or didn't really work until, um, you know, probably the following spring, right, or maybe no, late. No, we're not going to. What are we going to do this winter? No, I, well. That's the issue. Well, hopefully I, there's you, no you water need, there you're at all. You're going to need a contingency plan for this Yeah, winter. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I, I mean, I'll talk to the, I, I don't know what the solution is, I'll be honest with you. You don't know Other either. than pulling the pavement up. We already have a situation where we are underparked under today's zoning requirements right. for the, the square footage and the uses that are out there. So you would be bringing it more into non-compliance, and it's you know, I, I, I'm concerned what the, the legal ramifications of that would be in terms of you know, uh, akin to you know, almost like a taking of the property in a way, right? I mean, we can't use property that we've we've had and we've been enjo enjoying the use of through the years, right? So it, it's complicated. That's all. I mean, it's a complicated situation. Uh, we. <coughs> Uh, we're not saying it isn't. We're just saying that it is a public nuisance now more than six months ago, and nothing's been done, but now more than six months ago, and now with mosquitoes, and now with, with everything else there, and the foreseeable problem if it doesn't work in the, in the winter. And in the winter, I have to be able to, I think this board will have to be able to protect the community if, it, if it, that hole turns ice. If it all turns into a river there, nobody's going to come anyway. Right. W which is why they did the, the Jersey barriers to k k block that area off so it did ice over. It but would they, not be, it would be off limits. But, but the water is coming up to the Jersey barriers. Yeah, it's going beyond the Jersey yeah, barriers. Right. As soon as they get beyond, they have to move the Jersey barriers further. Right. I mean, it has been a very wet spring, I think, as everyone knows, right? So, I mean, I, that, that obviously, you know, contributed uh, to it. But, yeah. Who knows what's going to happen? All right, I think, uh, so to, you want to make August. a motion for um, So is this a continue, I guess a continuation to August? So I, mo I make a motion to continue the hearing for Bricks Moore. Um, hold on. Can, uh, where is the hearing? Uh, 111 Middlesex Turnpike, nuisance condition. Uh, motion to continue to the August Twenty, you know what the date is, Susan? It's twenty. I was going to say twenty-eight. Twenty-fourth. Twenty-five. August twenty-fourth meeting. 
And, then we, and, and I would like to add that we, we in, I'm sorry, 22nd. 22nd, August 22nd. And we invite one, two, three, four, people. August 22nd meeting. Uh, with Out of curiosity, when is the next hearing after the August 22nd hearing? Well, no, the, the, meet, the board meeting is, um, is on a monthly schedule in the summertime. That's why it's um, once a month, once in June, July, and August. And then September, it's twice a month, the second and fourth Tuesdays of the month. Well, to Mark's point, I do think it would be a more productive conversation if you did get a chance to try to do the work. No, I'm hoping the work is done, like, September 1st. So I would like the folks to come in August and at least tell us that the contractor has been secured, the date that they're coming, what they're going to do, and at least some thoughts around what Plan B is. If, Fair enough. Yeah. If if and when um, the cleaning does or the whatever work is is can't be done. Or, is, or does. is there a second? Second. Second. Mary Beth Welch. All in favor. Aye. 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 We'll see you in August. Thank you very much, Mr. Newman. Yeah. No. Thank you. Thank you, Walter. Thank you, I appreciate okay. it. Thanks. Well, right. Thank you, as always. All right. Jim, we haven't been here at 9.30 in a long time. All right. Um, we're down to, we're down to staff reports. First, the Associate Health, or health Inspector. Uh, we have our report in front of her. Yep. Would you like to uh, summarize anything? Um, I've just been working on wrapping everything up for the fiscal year, and I'll, I've done three camp inspections. We just have one waiting for August, so everyone else is up and running. I don't know if you have any questions. questions for her. I just have one. You had a lot of violations corrected. Yeah. Anything major? For for friendly food. toast, legal Seabrook, Sinesta, Young Chow Lu, Water Cafe, Twist Bakery, Tony C's. Anything that we should know about? They, they were all just standard routine. Anything else? No, I don't have Thank any. Thank you very much. For did the, uh, just one question. The um, the two tobacco violations, uh, did you, we inspected those afterwards and they complied with the yes. with I the, made sure that they the shut down. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for your hard work with yeah. the housing yeah. inspection. Yes, yeah, nice sure. job. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve the uh, so social health? I have a motion. I have a motion <laughs> by Mr. <laughs> Sweet <laughs> Second Wife. Mr. Ms. Welch. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next. <laughs> <laughs> Health agent, uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Ms. Johnson. Shoot, you're jumping. All right. Uh, would you please summarize anything that's? Sure. Um, the pre-operation outdoor pool inspections were all completed. Um, there's just one pool. The Marriott outdoor pool is the only pool that hasn't opened. They had some problems with their pump. So once they get that <coughs> taken care of, they'll call for an inspection. And then, um, there was a farmer's Anatesian market at Wayside Common. Uh, that was last Wednesday. They're having another one in the middle of July. Um, and um, I reviewed the applications that came in, issued permits. Um, Samantha did an inspection, and everything was good. Yes, please. Uh, Marlene, I saw a lot of positive comments about that um, market. Oh, good. Yeah, good. online. So a lot. Excellent. Yeah, I, di I didn't visit it, but you said the next one is They're having scheduled. another one, yes. It's um, a I think lot it's the of positive. 19th. <coughs> it's the Wednesday that week. Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. Four, four to seven? Was it four yes. to seven? Four to seven. I, I think people were excited because a lot of folks in town tend to go outside because we hadn't had it for a while and go to other towns. So, good. Nice to see you Great. back. Else? No, that's it. Okay. Okay. I have one comment. Uh, you know, I count these things. You had 106 issues, administrative issues that you took care of on the, since the last meeting. And thank you very much for all you. Oh, you're do. welcome. There were 106. I didn't count them, but there's a lot. Yeah, 100, I did count every one of them. 106. <laughs> and uh, people wonder what the health agent does and what the health inspector does. Uh, but I want to point out that. It's a lot of education as well as direction, as well as telling people they did the wrong or right thing. So True. thank you very You're much. Welcome. Motion to approve the, the uh, health agents report. So moved. Second. For, 
Motion by. <laughs> Second. Motion by Ms. Rose. Second by Ms. Greeny. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next. <laughs> okay, environmental engineer. 555 residents. Please tell us. Sure. Um, household hazardous waste was on June 3rd. We had a second highest turnout since I've been here wow. um, with 555 cars served. And um, it was a horrible day weather wise. It was a nice. very busy day. <laughs> but I uh, just want to thank the board members and staff members, DPW, and um, definitely our MRC volunteers who helped out with that effort. Christine, I thought it went so smooth for like such a change. Um, I mean, the funniest part was because usually we move and folks move, but we were end up they were like in front of us for a long period, and a lot of folks were asking me when the next one was. I'm like, you're not even through the line. <laughs> we're actually we're having the next one. I know. in September. Yeah, they're, they're also. Oh, at, you are going to do it at Fox Hill again. Okay. Do do we have an, a date already? September 23rd. Maybe we could do it at Bricksmore Park. Huh? <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> those jersey barriers <laughs> oh my god it, but it was funny when people coming through they asking it went well yeah yeah it, it went very smooth i thought so in the first half of the day i also thought where's everybody and then they all that crazy. was a large count it was crazy yeah mm -hmm. the only bigger one we've had since i've been here was um it was like, like mid-covid yeah when everybody had been home and cleaning yeah. for like <laughs> for three months yep yep mm -hmm. I also have one other question for you. Um, there is the frequency pumping of a septic tank. Can you explain a little bit more of that? Where's that? Um, hold on. It was. It has to do with a, a resident frequency of Thank pumping. You. I was just. I just had questions. I never oh, a, seen that. Oh, a, um, a resident. Uh, yeah, it's under your correspondent yeah. calls, emails. DPW has been updating their sewer versus septic system files, so they sent out a mailing, and I've had some people who probably, they knew they had a septic system, but realized they haven't pumped it in quite a long time, and I've had several inquiries about how often should a septic system, should it be pumped to maintain it properly, and the answer is once, one every three to, one to three years, depending on the number of people in your household. Um, so if it's just one or two people living there, it doesn't have to be as frequently, but if you've got a house full of people and you know, spe also especially if you have a um, food um, garbage disposal, then um, you should be looking at it one once a year. Yep. Thank you. Yep. There are 18 drink uh, drinking water wells in this town. Yeah. 18. Do we know are they really being used? As far as I know, yes. People are actually pumping and drinking their own water. And we, it's, it's their responsibility for testing the water Correct. that they're drinking, not, a, not anybody else. <coughs> and we have no idea whether they're drinking safe water or not. I, I don't, because they, these are, you know, very old <coughs> wells. I don't know that they, if people have tested them or what, what they've tested for. Well, would they, would, 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 do we know that there are areas that may contain contam uh, contaminants? VOC contaminants. Um, the no, no, none of the the wells are in a an area that's close to like a, a former MCP site. No. Yeah, none of them, near them. No, I think the. No, they're all in you know, in residential areas. Very interesting. Okay. Any other questions? I'm good. Uh, motion to approve the environmental engineer. I'm sorry, Andrea. Thank Second. you. Second. Second by Mary Beth. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Next one, uh, Michael Green, Associate Director of Public Health. His report. Do you have anything to? I would just like to highlight that we've been working closely with Tyler Technologies on our software upgrade um, for our permitting and inspection software that we're going to be transitioning to. Um, we are running into some complications with our GIS um, service and how it's going to relate to their software integration. Um, so we're working closely with Excuse 
uh, IT and Tyler Tech and kind of our GIS vendor now and, and possibly Big Quarry, which is a Google um, software that we might see if that's applicable uh, to move to. So, Any questions for uh, our Associate Director of Public Health? I can't shut this off. I gotta, <laughs> yeah, that. I gotta sh <laughs> new phone. There it is. Bedtime alarm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I had one question. How did the health fair hot wash go? It was good. I think uh, we a lot of things went really well, and there are a few things that we can tweak to make it even better. Is there something that I mean? I saw the. Uh, I saw the survey. It was fabulous. Yeah, a lot of vendors. Uh, they were very happy. Um, there are a few time-saving setup things that we can uh, square away prior to next year that I think will make uh, the, the morning flow a little quicker for us. Good. Anything else? No, I feel like it Motion gets better approve. every year. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Sheehan, uh, second by... Um, Mr. Sweeney, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Four zero zero. Last one. Report from our Director of Public Health, Susan Luminello. Do you have anything to point out? Um, no, just wind, winding down the um, fiscal year uh, 23, getting ready for the new fiscal year, going over all the budgets, uh, making sure the money is all spent for all the grants that we've gotten this year. Um, <coughs> MRC Rise grant and our tri ten grant and um, setting up the new grants for the next year and the new Florida Health budget. So, um, yeah. Any other questions? Uh, I had one question. The op opioid settlement, are we going to receive any money at Florida Health? The town is receiving the money, so it's going to be, um, you know, it's, it's under the the jurisdiction of the the um, town administrator who has um, had already had a couple of meetings with uh, different town departments, uh, Board of Health included. Um, so uh, Board of Health, um, the um, Youth and Family Services, police, fire, um, the administration. Um, so the administration is handling the, the money and is trying now to um, assemble the team for how that money is going to be so the work on that is starting. Um, it's it, it goes into the future. So it's it's you get it in the money in increments, and it's over a long period of time. So right now, DPH has put out a memo on specifics on how that money can be spent. So we're looking at those specifics and um, where we think um, a good uh, way to spend that money is. I've, I've brought in the uh, Triton epidemiologist and community health worker on that as well. So they attended the last meeting. Well, speaking of the Triton epidemiologist, nurse, and outreach coordinator, uh, do you think maybe in September you could bring them in here and they can introduce them to the community? I actually had them uh, asked if they could come in August so um, to provide an update. So they, they put it on their calendars for the August meeting, so I said, and then I was thinking maybe, you know, regular updates from them to the board every few months or so right. on what they're working on. It's scary. Yeah. <laughs> not gonna scare me. One, one thing that you should be aware of, uh, so um, the DPH, I had to do the budget for the fiscal year 24. They look at your work plan, they look at your budget, they accepted the work, the, well, then they come back with tweaks on it. Um, and one of the things that they said is for some reason you're not supposed to have community health worker type of positions now i don't know where that came from it's not in the budget manual it was approved for fiscal year 23 um, just kind of, kind of came out of the blue for me um, so we're going to jackie who is working as the community health worker the tweak that we kind of made is we changed the title of her position in the in the DPH budget from community health worker to public health specialist 
So if you hear me read, I'm going to be referring to her in some things as public health specialist rather than community health worker. She's, she's a great ad, by the way, too. She's, she is. She's good. All, yeah. yes, all, she's everyone, I mean, all of your hires for that job were excellent, outstanding, and very good professionals. Any other questions? Do I have a motion to approve the Director of Public Health Report? So moved. Um, second. Motion by Mayor Beth Loeb, second by Andrew Sheehan. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to adjourn? So Aye. moved. Uh, motion by Ms. Sweeney, second by? Second. <laughs> Andrew yeah. Sheehan, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, everybody. Please.